Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Welcome to uh, Stock Markets with Bruce. I'm your buddy, Uncle Bruce, where we cover the markets as best we can in plain English, uh, try to figure out what's happening. Lots going on all the time, everywhere. And uh, we're constantly uh, watching developments uh, globally to try to figure out what's happening in our neighborhood. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got all kinds of uh, uh, global events going on, including domestic events, and the markets react to uh, every little thing. Um, in the U.S. right now, the the um, reaction continues to be, or it seems to be, a reaction to the possibility that maybe, possibly, in the future, it could happen that maybe, sort of, the Federal Reserve might talk about the possibility that maybe somehow in the future someday they might institute a tapering program that could possibly somehow perhaps someday down the road maybe possibly make interest rates go up a quarter of a percentage point that's the end of the world right there there there's all you need to know uh you know just give it up and uh, don't don't have any don't have any hopes dreams or aspirations after that because with a one quarter percent interest rate rise in your prime lending rate, say two years from now, uh, why even go to school? <clears throat> why even get up? I mean, you might as well just pack it in. Um, I am I am constantly amazed. Uh, the older I get, uh, and I hate saying the fact that I'm getting older. I hate it because I'm still 17 years old inside this head here. I still am a, just a punk. But uh, looking at the mirror, I'm going, whew, whew, it's getting ugly. Uh, I am amazed how soft today's world is. We have turned in this world, this world, and, and I want to say the whole world. I want to say the world with which I am familiar. <laughs> Growing up in Canada, being a North American, you know, um, uh, we have turned into the softest bunch of uh, wusses. Uh, mankind has ever created. It is it is really pathetic. And um, uh, worry warts. Oh man, are we surrounded by worry warts? And uh, uh, I'm amazed at how uh, there is no one standing up saying, "Get over it." Uh, I think only Jerry Seinfeld does it uh, on uh, comedians and cars getting coffee. Uh, I believe it was Howard Stern that uh, was interviewed by Jerry. And Howard Stern, and, and also uh, Alec Baldwin. I uh, got to give him kudos too. Alec Baldwin. He said to Jerry, "You know, you could really do me a favor if you would just call me every morning when instead of being my instead of my alarm clock waking me up, if you wouldn't mind just giving me a quick phone call and just making sure, you know, say, is that you, Alec? He asked me. Get over it. Uh, he, that would make my day. I would. I'd get up and I'd be fine. But no, no, no." Um, I'm just I'm just blown away by how soft how many people are out there. I, I tell you, it's uh, 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 whiners and complainers, uh, crybabies. That's the word, maybe crybabies everywhere. It's just unbelievable, folks. You got to buck up, <laughs> buck up. Look at the mirror and and the other person on the other side. That's the only person that's going to make life better for you. If you're counting on someone else to make your life better for you get over it it's not gonna happen uh the the movies aren't real life i'm sorry i'm just uh, i'm just uh flabbergasted by it um uh there are politicians running against other politicians to get elected and even they don't have the answers they're only complaining about the way it is they're not offering solutions to whatever the problem they're claiming to be is a problem um I, and I'm amazed that the the the, the electorate, the, the so-called voters out there, and again, it's not all the voters. It's just 50.001%. That's all you need, right? You need one more vote than your opponent. And if you can convince only 38% of the voters to come out for an election, you know what you need to win an election? 19.1%. If you can get 19.1% of the eligible voters to vote for you, the odds are you're going to get elected. And if you can spend more millions of dollars on your opponent on your pathetic little message and garner 19.1%, you're in power. And uh, the other 81% of the population will go, why is this guy or girl in the office? Why are they in this position? 
They're, they're morons. These people are morons. Or these people are whiners. Or these people are uh, whatever they are, uh, right wing, left wing, uh, kooky, uh, uh, you know, making no sense whatsoever, thinking they know more than a doctor knows about medicine. Like, get out of my, get out of my hospitals, get out of my clinic and get back into your legislative offices and legislate laws. Get the hell out of my doctor's office. I don't need you here. Uh, I don't need your help and I don't need your opinion and I don't need you telling me and my, my family how to run our lives medically. I don't, don't need this. Didn't vote you, didn't vote for you. Didn't vote for you to be my doctor. You're a politician. Get back to that, that corral you belong in. It's unbelievable. Uh, and I, I'm just amazed how many, how many people are so gullible out there thinking that, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, if I vote for the right person, it'll, it'll all get better. It ain't getting better. Uh, these people have no power. They have no insight. They have no knowledge. And they have no uh, brains to make it better. They're simply uh, telling you how bad off you are and that it's the person in office's fault that your life is so tough. Uh, and that uh, you vote for them, it'll get all, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be better. I'm sure. And people are gullible enough to believe it because they're, they're unwilling to get off their fat lard asses and make something of themselves. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I was lucky. I mean, I, I keep admitting it. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, uh, I grew up in, in a family with a mom and a dad throughout my entire lifetime. That's lucky. Uh, I, didn't have a, I didn't have divorced parents. Um, my mom and dad uh, lived uh, a healthy, long, healthy lives, generally speaking. I was lucky. Um, I was brought up in, a, in, a, in, a, in an area of, the, of Canada that, was prosperous and where you you put the work in you could get ahead I was lucky uh, but I also uh, realized as I grew up uh, through my teenage years and <laughs> entered my 20s there's only so far that that can take you that that base can only take you to a certain level after that you got to take it from there now it's on you to take it further because up until my my uh, my teenage years, the fridge was always full of food because it was my dad's fridge, my mom and dad's fridge. Uh, the laundry was always done because mom did the laundry every week. Uh, I had to shovel the driveway when the snow fell, and I had to sh I had to mow the lawn when the lawn grew, and my sisters had to help around the house with with household stuff. Uh, that was a price we paid, a small price to pay when you think about it in the long run. But once I uh, once I grew up. Um, and moved out and that was at age 21 i think it was uh you're on your own now and um boy is it a is it a rude awakening uh very quickly uh when you realize oh gee uh, i'm on my own now and uh i gotta do my own laundry and uh i got i gotta go to the grocery store and figure out how this works how does all this work uh you get a cart okay i know that and you go up and down the alleyways i know that but what do you buy and how do you buy it and when and what ingredients go with what and how and thankfully jen and i were a couple at that time and what limited information she had and what limited information i had helped us kind of get things started and then we had that safety net of information we could always call go hey mom hey dad <laughs> uh, how, how, mom how do i do that <laughs> because i had some really really unique dinners uh in the first year of our relationship i had very unique food <laughs> nothing like my mother's cooking at all uh you learn pretty quick uh that the world is another place entirely and uh you can come from a nice home and you can come from good parents and you can come from a good upbringing but uh hey that doesn't carry you very far when you're talking straight across the desk with a human resources person or a manager or a business owner and you're trying to convince them to hire you uh you now have to sell yourself and uh, you've got to prove to them that they made the right choice when they brought you they trusted their gut to take you on and within a week they're sitting back going thank god i hired this one uh i was right my hunch was correct this one is a good one this is a keeper and uh uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're you're elevating within the organization, and uh, you know, you're you're part of the team, and you're you're part of the you're an asset to the organization as opposed to a liability. Uh, but um, today's world, uh, I, I'm amazed at how many of you out there, maybe not you, the viewers, not not my viewers, no, 
friends of yours, uh, relatives of yours, people you know, coworkers, um, how many are, uh, are wusses? Uh, they're absolutely wimps. Uh, they're, they need to be told what to do. They need to be told how to do what to do. I'm amazed at how directionless so many people are. It just blows my mind. Um, I really admire the, uh, the individual entrepreneur. I really do. I totally admire the individual entrepreneur. I am, uh, I'm a fan of anyone who has the guts to invest in themselves. I, I really, I am, I've always been a fan of that. I've always loved watching, uh, any kind of a documentary about the history of, a you know, a company XYZ founded by whatever. The individual, the family, the the brothers, the, the, the you know, the partners, whatever. <clears throat> I love stories like that because it isn't all peaches and cream uh, to get things up and running from scratch. It just isn't. It's hard goddamn work and it, it really is stressful and it requires uh, uh, drive and discipline and a will to succeed uh, and a will that you can't you can't crush it. But uh, in today's world, I, I, I'm listening to this idiot box over here my television um and time and time again i i hear i hear reporters asking politicians the kinds of questions that clearly tell me <clears throat> that either the the news organization the reporter the editor uh, the producer the director are are trying to trap these politicians into finding a way to make them admit or or tell the world that they can make the world a better place for them by just being elected and I'm waiting for a politician to stand up to a reporter and say, hey, wake up, buddy. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It starts with you. Uh, I'm just, a, I'm just, an, I'm a tool to make things better, but you've got to want it. You've got to want things to be better. You've got to work to make things better. Buck up and get with the program. Tie up your shoelaces. I hate people walking around without tied up shoelaces. I hate that. Tie up your shoelaces and let's go. Um, you know, maybe take a shave and a shower and clean yourself up and get out there. Uh, I just, I just uh, drives me nuts uh, when, when there's so much opportunity for people to succeed and they don't take advantage of it. They want someone else to do it for them. I'm just going get, get a life, man. Uh, get, get in the back of the line. If you're, if you're not going to stand up for yourself and <clears throat> better yourself, uh, you don't deserve to be in the front of the line. Uh, you're not a special case needs person. You're a lazy bum. Get back there and watch the successful succeed. I tell you, I get, I, it drives me nuts. Um, anyway. I'm just an old, but I'm an old man. You see, I'm allowed to do this now. I'm 65. I'm going to be 66. I'm allowed to rant because I'm supposed to. I'm old. See, old and cranky. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> I tell you, I laugh at this world more than I'm angry at it. I really, I, I chuckle at it more than I'm angry. Um, I, I find it uh, absolutely incredible uh, what I see going on. And I say to myself, oh, well, this reminds me of the 70s. Watch what's going to happen now. I bet you what's going to happen now is this, this, and this. Sure enough, sure enough, I'm right. Because <laughs> history repeats itself again and again and again. It just repeats itself. The markets repeat themselves. Politicians are a new generation, repeat themselves um mayor goldie wilson i love that i love that movie back to the future where uh, where the, uh, <laughs> the guy with the broom wants to become mayor and he, he becomes mayor and then in the future marty mcfly sees mayor goldie wilson he's running for his fifth time as mayor sixth time as mayor because once you're a politician you never get out you don't want to ever go back to the street because the gig is too juicy to go back to the real world i mean hey <laughs> you only have to go to your employers once every four years for a re-election uh, rather than show up at your boss's office every day and prove yourself. Uh, politicians only have to prove themselves once every election. And they can blame someone else for all your problems. That's the best part about being a politician. They don't, you don't blame them. They make sure you blame someone else. And you fall for it. You'll, you elect the same moron every time over and nothing changes. Why? It's the same moron in charge. <laughs> it's been 20 years of the same morons. Look at the Senate in the United States. Look at the Senate in Canada. Look at the elections uh, of provincial and state people. It's the same people. And if, and if it's not them, it's their kids. It's the same families again and again and again. And the population, the population falls for it every single time. And it is so predictable. It is laughable. But, you know, you only go around once. I can't go in a time machine back to when I was 25 and change the world. Uh, I'm, I'm 65 and I've been there. And I'm here, 
and we got to go forward. And I look at a ballot sometimes at the choices of who you can vote for, and there's they don't have the box called none of the above. If they had that box, uh, we could redo the election with whole new people, force these guys out. None of these guys got half the vote. They're all dropped. We now have to have a new slate of potential uh, nominees come forward. That's maybe how we should conduct an election where you, you know, you got to have 50% of the, of the vote or you, or you don't get in. And if we don't get anyone, then, then you're all out. We don't drop the last guy in the list. No, no, no. You're all out. All out. You're, none of you are acceptable. We come back up with another slate. <laughs> that'll, that'll change things. Then you have actually a real election. <clears throat> but uh, that ain't going to happen because corporate America and corporate Canada is going to make sure that's not going to happen because corporate Canada and corporate America have needs wants and desires. And those needs, wants and desires are low tariffs, low taxes, easygoing regulations, uh, uh, and anti-competition clauses to keep uh, competitors out, whether they're foreign or domestic. Um, and the local politician in town, the federal politician, the state politician, the provincial, they're more than willing to, to kowtow to your local corporation because those are the guys putting up the cash for those signs and for those TV ads, uh, that's the system, kids, and we're in it. And uh, welcome to your world. Um, yeah, what a what a what a goofy time. But you got you have to laugh more than cry because if you cry over it, you're lost. If you laugh about it, you you move on. Uh, I said yesterday on my show that uh, I don't know my local politician who's running for federal uh, office in this in this town. We have a national election happening in Canada right now. There's a federal election. It's like a presidential election. We're having it right now. Uh, it lasts until September 20 or something, 18. I can't. Even, I don't even know the date. I don't even know the date of the election. I don't know who the candidates are locally. I know who the prime minister is in Canada. And I kind of know the second guy who's trying to upset him and the third guy kind of. And I, and I, but I don't care because I know that no matter who gets in there, there will be no difference to the street level of Canada on the street. The level, there will be no change. There'll be not, it'll simply be whoever's in office will have their corporate masters with which they will now answer to. That's all it is. Uh, the reality in Canada is that the six biggest banks in this country uh, have been and will be the six biggest banks in this country a decade from now. 40 years from now, 70 years from now, there will be no seventh bank, eighth bank, none, none of that. The top six will run. The, they will be the top six. Uh, these guys are into everything now. Just like in the United States, bankers now are into all kinds of areas. And um, our boys uh, and girls uh, running the banks in Toronto and Montreal uh, control a huge portion of the Canadian uh, economy. And uh, uh, any politician on a federal level that wants to get elected has got to be on side with the boards of directors of these six or seven banks. Without being on their their side, you're, it's hopeless. Uh, it's hopeless. These folks have billions of dollars at their disposal and, and millions of dollars in slush funds to find ways to put out the rumors that you're a good person or a bad person. And, uh, and you will either be electable or you're not. And uh, uh, it, it's a, it's a close, it's a close shop. Um, <clears throat> you have to be from certain, a certain bloodline. You have to be from a certain, uh, uh economic, uh, connection. You have to have, uh, you know, the right, the right people in your corner or you're, you're dead an outsider trying to come in forget about it. It's not, not going to happen. Um, and so when you're old, like me, you kind of go, well, it's been 40 years since I was 25. Uh, <laughs> I've seen this same game. Now, you know, 10 elections, 12 elections in a row, I kind of know how it goes. Anyone who's 25 and just full of vim and vinegar is, is, is not aware of the systems. Uh, they're gullible to vote to, you know, whichever way the advertising campaign pushes them, whether they believe it or not. And uh, most, most Canadians, generally speaking, I would say 65 to 75, maybe 80% of Canadians do not give a crap about who's in office and who's running the country, couldn't care less because they know it makes no difference. The, 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 the deck is stacked against them to get a certain level and higher. Um, there's, there's no way you're going to be able to create a, a very successful corporation unless you have bribe money, which is influence money to, to work your way through and pay your way through. We, none of us have that. And so we know it's a closed shop. And, and in the US, I'm sure it's similar in certain regions. 
where you are, um, depending on where you're born in the U.S. on your zip code or where you live or where you go to school or where you tend to grow up as an adult, your future is cast. Your die is already cast. And uh, unless you're a part of the one percenters, uh, you know, you're you're destined to a middle class lifestyle. Good luck to you. Uh, some of you will break out. Yep. But again, if you're not soft in the belly and you got to you got you're willing to get up in the morning and work your butt off, there's ways to make it happen. But uh, for a lot of you, the die is cast. And uh, so many of your parents, uh, those of you who are younger watching me, your parents and your grandparents, uh, they gave up a long time ago. A long time ago, they gave up and they realized where their place was. And they uh, they kind of stayed in their place and uh, they made the best of it. Um, but and when you're young and you're full of vim and vinegar, you, you, you feel there's no limit. There's no limit to what you can be and what you can do. I get it. Yeah, sure. Um, and the good news is that in today's world, if you're a go-getter, there's potential for you. There really is. There's upside for you. You can really make a change in your life, but you've got to want it. And you're going to have to want it on your own. And you cannot look for someone else to give it to you. Forget about it. It's not coming from an outside source. You have got to want it yourself. Any of you out there thinking of winning the lottery to get ahead? Uh, I'll tell you what, you'll make more money selling lottery tickets than uh, buying them. Uh, so get yourself a lottery stand and make a living doing that and sell 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 dreams to others uh, because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, a hot, so it's not going to happen to you. Um, I just get the impression that I'm going to win the lottery one day, about the day before I kick the can. I think that's when I'm going to win the lottery. <laughs> I'm going to win it with like a week to live <laughs> on life support. The one ticket I bought last week before I went into the coma uh, is the winner, and I never knew it. Um, <laughs> yes, you kind of wonder if that's how it's going to go. Anyway, welcome to the happy show here today. Uh, thanks to, for joining me here on a, on a Thursday morning, August the 19th, 2021. The markets are under pressure right now. Um, uh, Asia kept going down last night after the American market dropped off. Uh, Europe kept dropping as well, and America is dropping again this morning. I don't know how much conviction there is with regards to selling. Not sure if American investors want to keep dumping stock. Uh, they've been uh, dropping stock now for a couple of days. And uh, right now the Dow is at 34,588. Uh, we might be uh, we might be approaching some kind of support levels for the Dow. Um, uh, let me take a look here where we're at right now. The high for the Dow uh, so far all time high thirty five thousand six thirty one, and we're at thirty four thousand um, uh, uh, five ninety six. So we're a thousand points down from the high of the Dow, which was just a few days ago, um, last week, obviously. And so here we are now. The question is. All right, we were down a thousand points with this morning's uh, pre-market factored in. That's about three percent. Um, is that it, or are we going to have a real correction? Are we going to get a, uh, a say a seven to twelve percent correction, ten percent correction? If we're going to get another two thousand points of correction before we bottom up, which stocks are going to pay the price? Which of the Dow thirty are going to take the hit? so that the Dow 30 will be off 10% in, in value. That is the proverbial question because there are only 30 stocks in the Dow 30. There aren't 300. So it's going to have to happen uh, with, uh, you know, a certain number of the Dow 30, uh, you know, 20 of the 30 or, or, or 15 of the 30. I mean, who's going to take the shot lower um, to, uh, to ultimately, uh, uh, you know, make this index drop another 2,000 points. Uh, you have to go with the ones, the, the, the stocks that have the most influence perhaps on the Dow. You might have to go with them, uh, but um, it won't be the bottom five, uh, smallest 30 of the 30 has to be in the top five of the top 15. Who is this going to be? At the moment, we're, we're showing, uh, we're showing uh, you know, as, as of last night, we're showing Goldman Sachs, United Healthcare, Amgen, Apple, Caterpillar, Boeing, 3 They were losers. Um, we didn't have much in the way of winners. How is this going to play out uh, this morning? This is this is the big question. Same thing with the S&P 500. Uh, the S&P 500, w which stocks are going to drop off the most to give it a 10, 15% correction? I don't see Apple and Microsoft leading the way down. I don't see Google leading the way down for the market. I don't see Amazon leading it the way down. Um, I don't see the FANG stocks being the problem. 
I think the FANG stocks are going to be the salvation of the markets uh, because they're making record amounts of money. They're doing just fine in the middle of the pandemic, in a pandemic that's being extended and extended and extended. Um, they can they can plug along just wonderfully. Um, who's in trouble um, industry wise? Uh, who's having the toughest time right now making a go of it in this current economy? And it, it comes down to uh, the travel sector has ha had a lot of, you know, crap kicked out of it. Um, automotive to a degree uh, because of uh, obviously supply chain problem. Um, not the transportation facilities as far as container ship companies. They're not having a tough time. They're getting record re record revenues right now from um, suppliers, from from shippers uh, gullible enough to sign two-year contracts at all-time record high for containers. I, I'm, I'm amazed that uh, that uh, outfits like Amazon are, are telling the container companies to go, go to hell uh, because a guy like Bezos um, could buy container companies and control his own costs. He can just literally buy the supply chain uh, company uh, to avoid supply chain problems. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. He's already bought the planes uh, for domestic flights, so he, he's not beholden anymore to FedEx's rates, UPS's rates. He is slowly but surely building his own fleet of aircraft. He just buys up used planes that are 15, 20 years old, by the way. It's, keep in mind that uh, the Bezos uh, the folks at Amazon, they're very smart. Uh, they're buying up 20-year-old 767s that used to run with passengers. They're gutting the middle of the airplane, turning it into a... Uh, cargo carrier, which is rather inexpensive. It doesn't cost a lot of money. The planes are like 5 million bucks a piece. They're a joke. Uh, it costs more to fuel them uh, during the year than to pay for them. And um, uh, they're, running, uh, they're running the packages. You don't have to have a nice smooth flight back there to keep everybody happy. You don't have to feed people. You don't have to give them drinks. It's just boxes back there inside containers. No one's complaining back there. So um, great way to, you know, it, it, open your business and and uh, uh, corner your own market. Uh, vertical integration. You get the customer at home to order the product. You get the manufacturer of the product to ship you the product to the appropriate warehouse. You have the warehouse pick the product, uh, put it, in a, you know, label it, put it in the appropriate appropriate truck wherever it's going. It goes to the airport for uh, delivery overnight inside a container. The, this entire container is heading to Seattle. Uh, off to Seattle it goes, or San Francisco, or Denver, or New York, or Chicago, Atlanta, whatever. Uh, trucks waiting there, going to processing centers, divvy it up into trucks and deliver it to people's homes. They're doing their own delivery system from the truck back to the distribution center, back to the airplane, back to the distribution center, back to the manufacturer, over to you. It's all vertical integration. And uh, soon, um, Amazon will provide you with merchandise that is exclusively manufactured overseas and they will have a, uh, a delivery process international where they will literally buy container ship companies and half the ship is their containers. The other half of the ship is containers for the rest of the world at market rates and the market rates will be high. At the mark, the the world market will pay to ship their goods across uh, on Amazon-owned ships uh, through subsidiary companies, and Amazon will break even on the. They will literally ship their goods across the world for free because it'll be subsidized by everybody else, and uh, then and then distributed to their warehouses and to you, and so they can keep prices low because they control the entire process. Whereas your mom and pop store in downtown, wherever you live. Uh, you go down there to buy the same product that Amazon has for sale on their website and you walk into their store and you get greeted by the owner uh, and, and or the owner's children or, or employees and you get royally looked after and you buy the product that by the time you walk out the store, it's 50% um, more in cost. But um, you've, lo you've supported a local business, uh, but that local business had to pay a much higher price to get that one item into their store than Amazon did to get it into their warehouse. And so uh, Amazon will sell 100 of these items online when these local stores sell one. And Amazon will be the big winner and the local stores will just kind of meander along and try to make a go of it. Unfortunately, some of the customers inside that mom and pop store will bring one of these with them. As a matter of fact, 
everybody will bring one of these with them. And they'll look at that item that is available by the mom and pop store. They'll scan the little barcode on it with their little camera here, beep, and then they'll uh, compare pricing at Amazon. And they'll find out that, oh my God, I can buy the item here for $50, or I can have it delivered to my house tomorrow for $29.99 by Amazon. What am I going to do? How much do I love the mom and pop store in local towns compared to saving 40% on the purchase price and having it delivered to my home? There you go. Um, there's, the, there's the dilemma. Some of you will pay the $50. You will give the extra $20 to the local entrepreneur because you want that store to survive. Unfortunately, there won't be enough of you to save that entrepreneur. There'll be some of you, but not enough of you. And uh, the other 99 of you will go, yeah, well, you know, nice to see you. Take care. Bye. You know, you'll buy a pen or you'll buy a sticker for a couple of bucks and then out you go. But that $50 item, you're spending 30, 30 on it uh, online, whether it's available or not. You're going to, even if it's not available, it says it's available, but it's not available. You'll wait two or three weeks to get it because um, one, you want to support the local business, but you can't afford to pay 40% more for a lot of goods that you need on an ongoing basis. For one item like that, you can afford it. But for 20 items, no. And at Christmas time, you need to drop $500 in Christmas presents or $700 or $1,000, but whatever your budget is, can your budget be double that or half that? Well, I know the answer. It has to be half that. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, uh, th this is this is where uh, this uh, this world is headed. And uh, it's... Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough one, uh, a tough one for small businesses to really make a go of it against the big boys. But hey, uh, Amazon did drop the money. Uh, they they even reinvested in their business for 30 years now, and they own these warehouses. They have the trucks. They've got the jets. They'll eventually have these containers, um, and they will control the the entire process from A to Z. Uh, and uh, we're going to let them do it uh, because we're going to support them financially to do it. Uh, and there will not be a competitor to Amazon that will knock them off their perch. Uh, don't don't even think about that. Uh, can you imagine uh, uh, trying you trying to open up a warehouse in in a county in a, in an area in New Jersey that is going to compete with the warehouse that's been here for 25 years that that employs 15,000 New Jersey people? You now want to open up a warehouse that competes with that warehouse that could drive that warehouse out of business. Uh, and you're not politically connected to the state capital like the Amazon people are, uh, good luck with your zoning. <laughs> good luck with your licensing. Good luck with your state employment board um, for worker safety and the surprise inspections and all that. Good luck, because uh, unless, you're, unless you're bribing the politicians to be on your team uh, through you know, super PAC donations and, and, and you know, a charitable giving things, you're out. Uh, you're, you're, you're not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> find another state uh, to open up your warehouse to compete against this warehouse to drive it out of business because uh, they're so entrenched. You haven't got a chance uh, in any event. Uh, but again, I'm old. What do I, what do I know? I'm, I'm 65. I'm old. I'm, I'm cranky and, uh, you know, I'm skeptical and, you know, I'm not full of the, you know, the, the 25, 35 year vim and vinegar I used to have, you know, because I see the world differently now that I'm older and I'm going, hmm, there's things not adding up here. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome to the show, the channel, the dream, the hopes and the aspirations. I'm glad you're here. Um, hope I'm not, I'm not scaring you. <laughs> Through all of this, there's opportunity. There really is. Uh, you just have to be observant enough observant enough to find it that's all you have to be just just you have to keep an open mind and you have to keep your eyes open and uh today uh or these days um you know you're following the stocks we've been following the last little while and uh now we're we're now looking to uh to see where our potential is where can we make money in this market and uh Back in January, February, it was kind of easy. You you bought uh, you bought some of these hot meme stocks, and they they traded like unbelievably amounts of uh, unbelievable amounts of volume. And if you got lucky, you caught a wave and made money. But most of you were making money going. I don't know how I made money. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, I bought this stock and it was up fifty dollars a week later. I, I can't tell you why. It just was. And uh, a lot of you kind of got hoodwinked into thinking, well, this is how it is. This is this is normal. 
this is the normal how I, I I can't believe I didn't know the stock market worked like this. I if I'd have known this 10 years ago, I'd have been doing this 10 years ago. Uh, not knowing that it's not normal. Uh, this this is not normal, and this is not normally how markets work. Uh, but in the last six months, you've been kind of figuring it out, going, yeah, you know what, Bruce is right. It, it, it isn't this isn't normal. Stocks generally don't go from two dollars to four hundred dollars in three weeks. Uh, okay, <laughs> they kind of meander along. <laughs> they meander along, and sometimes they go in directions they're not supposed to go. When everyone figures they're going to go one direction, they go like another direction. What is this? Uh, what is with this uh, deal here? Like, why, why are these stocks doing this? Uh, the reality is that when you're playing the stock market, you're you're betting against other people. That's that's the bottom line. Um, if all of you feel that a stock's about to go higher, you have to ask yourself in the back of your mind, well, who's going to be the buyer to make this go higher? Who, who, who? Why would the stock go higher? If I'm already in, and everyone I know is already in, and they're, everyone on this channel, we're all in on a stock. Why would it now go higher? What, what on earth would make this happen? And it, 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 it's a, it's a. Uh, the answer, of course, is uh, not of course. One of the answers is volume will make it go higher. More participants coming into a stock will make it go higher. If more buyers keep coming into the market after you're in. It goes there. Sound like a pyramid scheme, though, doesn't it? You you got in early, and then people are coming in after you, and they're paying more for the same thing you paid lower for earlier, and they're paying more. The company is the same company three weeks later, or two weeks later, same company, same management, but yet the stock is more valuable. It's not perceived at a higher value now. That's the stock market. The perception of the future potential of the corporation is what will dictate the price of the stock today, and uh, the key for those of you who are watching this old man uh, is to be involved in stocks that are either out of favor or about to become into favor or about to become discovered by the market as a whole um, where buyers go wow hey uh, this thing really is real this is the real deal uh, I should I should definitely pick this stuff up and this brings me to SoFi um, I'm happy to report to you today um very confident to say to you that um, if you stick around with SoFi, I think you're going to make a lot of money. I really do. I think your SoFi shares are going to do very, very well for you. But you have to tolerate the day in and day out grind that SoFi is giving you and the markets can give you. Um, SoFi shares were $17.50 a share just before the earnings came out last week. They're now at thirteen ninety nine this morning, um, and even at seventeen fifty, they were way undervalued as far as I'm concerned. But then again, I have a perch to look at SoFi from the experience level of nineteen seventy eight. I've got that perch. You don't. Most of you, almost all of you, do not have that. A handful, maybe, but not a majority of you. Um, I'm looking at this SoFi going, you know, I am seeing stuff happening here. I'm reading stuff about what's going on behind the scenes that um, is uh, making me smile from ear to ear about this stock's potential. Um, I, I am really, uh, really pumped about it. And um, I think that those of you who stick around for the, with this stock, whether you're holding options or, or shares or both, I think you're going to do really, really well. One of the things that really gets me going about this one is uh, uh, I'm noticing now more and more um, uh, mentions uh, in the in the in the inter through internet and, and through 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 postings and through uh, other videos for the YouTubers and on and on and on it goes from multiple places. I'm beginning to see more and more references being made to how many of these shares of the company are held and are being acquired by institutional investors. And that term institutional investors is, is generic. And I, you forgive me if I'm, you know, if you I'm confusing you, what I'm trying to tell you in plain English is large, um, betters of the market, the, the big investment firms, the large head fund, hedge funds, large investment teams, um, ETFs, mutual funds, pension funds, and privately run um, um, investment pools systematically have been buying up 
the SoFi stock. Quietly, without any fanfare, they don't want you to know about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to brag about it. They have just been quietly buying up the stock of SoFi block after block after block and the latest report i'm getting the kind of indications are that now upwards of 40 percent of all shares of sofi are are now held by holders of stock that didn't hold it three months ago didn't have it three months ago they are buying up blocks of this stock as it is coming in uh for sale they're not running after it they're letting it come to them and they're they're doing it exactly the way I would be doing it. If I had a client saying to me, Bruce, I want to get a million shares of SoFi, but I don't want anyone to know about it. And I don't want to move the market one penny higher per share. Get me a million shares. Then what I would be doing is I would be putting in a buy order to buy this stock, but at the lower end of the bid ask, always letting stock just come to me, never pushing it, always coming to me, never showing my hand that I need a million. No one would know but I'm always trying to nibble up on this stuff. It might take a while, but I'll get a million shares without running the market. I'm of the belief that hundreds of millions of shares of SoFi have been acquired this way for weeks now, weeks and months, uh, prior to the vend-in and now post vend-in. And a whole bunch of papers come into these hands at prices around 22 all the way down here to 14. So they're just, they're just buying it up, buying it up, buying it up. Whoever wants out, he can get out. There's good liquidity on this stock. 20750000 yesterday. Good liquidity. Um, anybody wants out of a, a half a million shares of this stock, no problem. There's a buyer for you. You might not get it off in one trade, but three or four trades, it, you, you're out. You're, you're looked after. Um, this stock is being acquired and is being tucked away and is not coming back until there's a three handle on this thing. It, it, it's over 100 a share before any of these shares are coming back to the market. This is my personal take. It's just my opinion. You don't have to believe it. Uh, no guarantees. I'm just giving you my opinion. That's what this channel is, is my opinion. Uh, but I see the evidence uh, uh, just constantly mounting and mounting because normally a stock that has gone down from $17.50 to $14 and is still trading 20 plus million shares at 14 bucks a share would keep going down. And it wouldn't go down in pennies. It would go down in in quarters it would be going down from you know 14 to 1375 to 1350 to 1325 to 13 to 12 we just keep going 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 it's not happening it's going down in pennies it's reluctantly going down um it goes up of course it but you know it fluctuates obviously uh there's a lot of day trading here a lot of speculators jumping in and out of a thousand at a time two thousand at a time five thousand at a time ten thousand at a time why because they can the liquidity is there. They can get into 10,000. They can get out of 10,000. They're, they're trading. Um, but the underlying reality is there is some entities. There's a, there's a buyer. There is a certain kind of buyer that is buying up this stock as it keeps coming in. And it's not dropping the market by a dollar, two dollars a day, every single day. And um, that tells me, yep, this, this is being scooped up and this stock is being put away. And, uh, it's showing me that uh, the reality here is that uh, once this uh, turnaround happens on SoFi, and I mean a turnaround, turnaround, not back to 17 or anything like that. When I, I'm talking about when this thing will, takes its run, not in one day. It won't go from 14 to 30. It's not going to happen in one day. But when that down the road, we look at a chart and go, oh, that's where it happened right there. You can just see the chart. That's where it began its run all the way to where we are now 30 35 a share and higher now this history will there will be a day in history we'll be able to look at it and go oh yeah that was the day it was subtle but that was the moment in time where the stock turned when that happens it's a one-way street long term there will be up and down days but there'll, there'll be higher highs lower uh, uh, higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs we're going to get into that pattern for a long long time and uh, this stock will eventually reach a three handle that means a hundred dollars a share or more it will reach that level and keep on going my hunch also is that this company is a takeover target there is no one dominant owner of this stock and i i get the impression that uh deep pocketed buyer uh 
a, theoretically a Ryan Cohen on steroids um, could be a buyer of this company, but it would likely not be one person. It'll likely be an entity that uh, is run by either a person or a group of senior people that uh, has hundreds of billions of dollars of value, unbelievable amounts of power and capital at their disposal. They're going to buy up this company. Now, this company is valued today at about $11 billion. The market cap of SoFi at 14 a share is about $11 billion. Um, if you want to take over this company right now, and buy it. If you want to put in a, a takeover offer to the board of directors, you're probably going to have to show up with about a $25 to $30 offer um, to get their attention. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what will happen is um, uh, buying will continue by various senior acquirers, and there will be blocks of stock held by this investment group, this investment group, this investment group, this one over here. And my hunch is that an outside buyer will, will want to take over the company and they will talk to each of these large holders of stock and they will get their general um, consensus that it's a, it would be a good idea if your organization came in and took it over. Not to just buy it and leave it alone, but to buy it, <clears throat> fund it, and it really expand it from here. But I have this vibe that um, gut feeling that uh, the buyers of this stock who are buying up 3%, 5%, 8%, whatever blocks they're going to have. And we'll know in the next few weeks as these new filings come out through the SEC declaration of holdings. <clears throat> these folks aren't going to take under 100 a share. They're, they're, they're not. They're, they're interested in, they'll sell. They'll, they'll go with a takeover. But uh, it might be six months to a year from now. And it'll be at over 100 a share by the time it's all said and done. The stock might already be trading at 55 and then the deal gets done at 100 or it's trading at 85 a share and gets done at 125. It's going to be a major attention grabber. It's going to be a historic deal because we're not talking about a 10 or $11 billion takeover. We're going to be talking about a $100 billion takeover. It's going to be a huge takeover, but it will make perfect sense to whoever it is that will acquire it is by the time they do acquire this stock, this company, they'll have between five and 10 million customers that are generating profits to the company rather than a Robin Hood where you have 20 plus million accounts, but none of them really make any money for the house. The house loses money. <clears throat> Here with SoFi, <clears throat> they might have one fifth the number of, of clients, five million. They might have 10 million, but a majority of those 10 million, let's say nine and a half of the 10 million or nine of the 10 million, will actually make income and profits to SoFi, as opposed to Robinhood where only one-tenth of the clients probably make money to, Sofi, to, to Robinhood. Robinhood probably has only has 90% customers of their customers don't make them any money. We're here, 90% of SoFi customers makes, make SoFi money. That's my, my take on it. A year from now, I think that's where we're going to be at. That's it. That's where I think we're at on this, uh, you know, where we're at. That's, uh, that's where we're, we're going to be. Anyway, man, we're going to find out here uh, when it all comes together how it's all going to work out and how it's all going to uh, you know, fit in. Um, uh, time will tell. We're now 12 minutes away from the opening. Um, can't wait. Um, I want to see if this, this sell-off is real or just uh, Memorex. Is it a real deal or not? Uh, thank you all of you who are here today, who are following me. Um, those of you who are members, uh, really appreciate that you're here. Uh, great to have you on board. Uh, those of you who are not members, uh, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you've subscribed to this channel. All of you are subscribers. Thank you for, for subscribing to, to Stock Markets with Bruce. Um, and then those of you who just casually watch me, uh, please become, uh, please consider becoming a bigger part of the family here. Love to have you. Uh, if you can handle the uh, the musings of an old guy like me, um, then thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, sometimes I can't uh, I can't tell you what you want to hear. Um, that's the one thing you're going to figure out if you hang out with this channel. Uh, there will be times where I will not tell you what you want to hear. Uh, but in my opinion, and again, it's my opinion, you might need to hear it because you're not going to hear from anybody else. Uh, there are too many channels out there that you can go to where they're going to try to tell you what you want to hear and it'll make you feel better. And if that works for you, great. That's super. I'm, 
I'm happy. I'm, if you're happy, I, I'm happy. Uh, but um, I can't make you happy by lying to you and only telling you half a story and not sharing my experience with you. If I did that, I, I would lose all credibility for this channel. And I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to give you my thoughts. I'm going to try to tell you in plain English what the heck is going on here. Uh, what I think the heck is going on here. And you have to decide for yourself whether, you know, this old guy has any merit or not. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, uh, and, you know, I'm probably one of the most tolerant channels out there <laughs> where I let people come in here and bitch at me. <laughs> you would uh, be surprised at some of the emails I get. Um, the criticisms that I get are just incredible. Uh, uh, on the one hand, people are happy that I do what I do, uh, but then they're really upset at what I say. And uh, I kind of look at uh, I look at the message and I kind of go, "Well, you want a perfect world. You want to be a, you want to be in a kumbaya campfire moment all the time. And life doesn't work like that. I'm sorry, kids. Uh, uh, again, I think um, Canada, America, Europe." Uh, we have gotten really soft. Uh, we have really lost the uh, the uh, oomph that we used to have, and we're forgiving of incompetence. It's incredible how how easy we got, we are with incompetence. It's amazing to me. <clears throat> and I'm 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 again I'm shocked. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm shocked at how uh, uh, how some of us in this world of ours. Uh, react so negatively against other people for their thoughts. But, you know, we talk the talk about it's a free country, Canada, USA, it's a free country, you're allowed to air your views here. But then if you do it, you're not, you're, oh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you say what you think? Um, you're obviously, uh, you know, you're, you're this, you're obviously that. You're, they're quick to judge, quick to jump, quick to hate. And I'm amazed at how many haters there are out there. It's truly shocking. Uh, Rene, thank you for joining this channel as a new member. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I can't. I can't help you. Uh, I guess I can't help you is what I'm saying. I, I can only help those of you who want to hear, you know, whatever point of view I've got versus what you're hearing. And you have to make up your own mind which way you want to go. Uh, but uh, making up your mind about an opinion or someone's opinion doesn't mean that you grab an AK-47 and take them out. It, it, that, that's not how it works. You, it's called respectfully agreeing to disagree is what the term actually is. Uh, because uh, people's views and, uh, and uh, opinions uh, change and, and, and adjust as the time goes by. Uh, what we used to think about in the 80s and the 60s versus what we think about today is different because it was a different world in the 60s, a different world in the 80s, a different world in 2000 different world today it'll be a different world in 10 years and in 20 years it'll be a different world again there will be people in 20 years from now if they watch my videos they'll go that guy was a complete moron and others will go that guy was on point um he was right for five years that but then he was wrong <laughs> um i find it amazing also that uh, how many people will uh, criticize me personally for my opinion on a company or a stock or a whatever uh, because six months after I say something about a company or three months or two months something happens with the said entity and it's now all my fault how dare I like them in March how, how dare you do that to me um, what can I say kids uh, every day is a new day and uh, you're allowed to change your mind I'm allowed to change my mind I'm allowed to speak my mind and I'm allowed to not change my mind uh, day in and day out, as are you. Uh, that's the beauty of, I think, of this Western democracy in which we live. You're allowed to maintain an opinion, rightfully or wrongfully, as long as you want. It's it's your call. You have to live with your decision. It's your bet. You make it. Uh, fair enough. But uh, anyway, it, it is what it is. I uh, I'm just uh, just a YouTuber in a living room at the moment in Creston, uh, saying hi. How are you? Welcome to the show. Um, Thank you for being here today. We're about to open in this market. Six minutes to go. Let's hope we make money today. That's that's what I hope will happen for all of you out there. Um, that can't be controversially bad, can it? But when some people, I guess it is. Maybe I'm being too greedy now. I don't know. 
We're down 231 points on the Dow at this moment on the pre-market. S&P is down 25, NASDAQ down 64, crude down a buck 80. And this is a tell, a real tell. Uh, uh, people want to know, are we going to have higher interest rates? I say with oil dropping like this, nope. Why is oil dropping like this? Uh, simple, not as much as needed uh, for the market as previously thought. It's as simple as that. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of how much oil is available to, to buy versus how much is wanted to buy. And right now, the imbalance is more available than needed. And so the price drops. It's nothing personal. It's just business. And when you go to your grocery store and you want to buy something, if you happen to walk by a shelf where there are a billion jars of, uh, of uh, Welch's grape jelly, uh, they might be on sale. Uh, but if you go to another grocery store and they've only got six jars of grape jelly, there probably isn't going to be a sale there. It all depends on supply and demand sometimes. Nothing personal just logistics and product and and supply and demand that's all it is um airfares go up when everybody wants to fly airfares go down when not as many people want to fly because airplanes can't make seats disappear airplanes have so many seats on a plane and a plane depending on the airline has got to fly from chicago to new york so many times a day and back every day so many times these planes have got to fly back and forth and at the head office of the airline they got to figure out we got to sell 2,000 seats a day on this uh, flight uh, arrangement here between Chicago and New York. We have 1,000 going this way, and we have 1,000 seats going that way every day, seven days a week, and we got to fill them up. And if on Tuesday we're overbooked, well, then Tuesday's fares will be the highest. But if Wednesday we're open with a bunch of things, we'll have a sale for Wednesday only. Uh, that's how it works. It's not personal. It's not political. It's just business. Think of the Godfather. It's just business. It's not personal. And um, airfares fluctuate. Tomato prices fluctuate. Beef prices fluctuate. Peanut butter and jelly and jam and bread fluctuate. You got to just go with it. Stocks fluctuate. Stocks fluctuate based on needs, wants, and desires. Uh, thank you. No, uh, ma Masset. Masset th thanks, buddy, for being here. I can't pronounce that, but thanks. <laughs> you remember? Uh, you know, it is just the way it is. Uh, it's not personal. It's just the market. And uh, oil right now is down from 78 a barrel to 63.60 a barrel. It should be cheaper at your gas station. It, it should be. Uh, and should be getting cheaper as each day goes by. Those prices should be coming down. Uh, but if they're not, then someone's gouging you. It's not me, uh, but someone is getting you. Uh, what can I say? Uh, if Americans and Canadians in one day for like a week, we decided for a full week, we're not going to buy gas this week. No matter how low the tank, we're not buying gas this week. And next week when we go to the gas station, we're only going to put in five bucks into the tank. When we buy gas, five bucks at a time. That's it. Um, prices of oil and gas would drop by 50% just overnight <laughs> because this, uh, the oversupply of fuel in the system would just blow it out. It would, it would be unbelievable. There are super tankers of oil coming into America on scheduled delivery runs. Uh, there are, are oil pipelines delivering billions of barrels of product, all scheduled to deliver. And if all of a sudden, overnight, uh, half the product coming is not needed, there's a backup instantly, a massive backup. Pricing will collapse, absolutely collapse. You'll go negative like we did last year, go negative temporarily. Um, that is how strong and powerful you guys are as consumers. But unfortunately, we don't we don't get together like that. We don't we don't do that, and so we get manipulated by the uh, by the majors. That's the way it is, um, and we we we, uh, we fall for it. We we consider it normal, and we we uh, we talk about oil and gas prices, and we go, oh well, that's the way it is. And therein shows how gullible we are, or how sucked in we are, when we go, well, that's just the way it is. Uh, Game over for uh, being in charge of your life. Um, what can I do? Anyway, welcome to the show. And uh, welcome to the uh, what the old man ranting and raving tonight uh, or this morning. It's nice to have you here. Um, good to see you. Uh, we're down 224 on the Dow. We're getting ready to open up. The bell's about to ring. Um, Carl Cantania is talking and getting ready to uh, watch the open. There's Jim Kramer making a point. 
Fantastic. I um, hope you're all doing all right. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, we're waiting for the opening, and we are now opening. The bell is ringing. There it is. And I just saw the first flash of shades go through here on my devices. I'm showing SoFi at 1422 on its way to hundreds of dollars a share uh, sooner or later. And now I see that. Thirteen ninety-five, and I don't know what price to believe on SoFi because it's just all over the map. Uh, but um, what do we got here? Robinhood uh, looks like Robinhood is under a tad bit of pressure this morning. Uh, Forty-five oh five, uh, last trade, um, based on their uh, results and their progno prog prognosis and potential. Uh, this stock is a solid fifteen dollar a share company, solid. Uh, but it's trading forty-five, so. Knock yourself out. Uh, that is a put candidate if I've ever seen one. SoFi, I'm showing now at 1397, I guess. Uh, 1403, I guess. Uh, uh, whichever device you believe in. Uh, 700,000 plus volume so far as we are trying to open up this market in some semblance of order. I don't know what to believe. Uh, GameStop, I'm showing 157.28 up 23 cents on 45,000 shares. I've got... Uh, uh, ATIP so far not trading as far as I can tell you. Uh, AMC looks like it's down 35 cents on 2 million. A very quiet opening for AMC. Uh, Matterport showing an indication of 1401 uh, with a low of 1384. Down 8 now at 1401 on 49,000 volume. Um, 23 and me, it looks like it's 801 to 804 on 64,000. And uh, we have fifth wall. Uh, I think it's down a dime. I'm not sure if it's really open or not. Um, Vector, uh, tomorrow is takeover day uh, for Rocket Lab. Uh, Vector looks like it's at 1002. Spire at 989, down a penny. And um, Sextera at 831, down um, 19 cents on 7600. Very quiet opening there. Uh, we have uh, Vanek down a buck seventy-four. Home Depot down fifty-six cents. The IBM down fifty-two. The Dow's down one seventy to start the morning, which is a heck of a lot better than the pre-market indications. We were under three hundred points in the pre-market. Now down only one fifty-four. S and P down nineteen. Nasdaq down sixty-three. It could be though that the Dow is not fully open. There could be delays in some of the issues uh, starting their trading. And that might be why the Dow is not yet showing uh, the full scope of how bad it is uh, at the moment. Let's just give it a bit of time. I'm showing Goldman down 350 um, at 395 a share. Bargoon there. Uh, Nike down 230. Caterpillar down a buck 80. Uh, <clears throat> Amex down a dollar sixty, Boeing down a buck sixty, Visa down a ducks buck sixty, and Chevron down a buck and a half. So, not catastrophic losses at all nothing catastrophic uh, just uh it's just uh, stocks underwater at this point only three showing a gain on the dow now four cisco proctor and gamble home depot and merck are the four higher stocks cisco is on my uh, favorite list um uh, home depot is on my favorite list they're the two dow leaders this morning uh, up 75 cents to 62 cents proctor gamble up 56 cents merck up 22 so that's what we got there. Um, let's see. How else are we doing? Let's go back to the uh, top of the list here for our faves, starting with Robinhood down 386 to 45.94. SoFi at 14 even, uh, down 22 cents. GameStop down 41 cents. ATIP down 15 cents to 384. AMC down 62 cents. Matterport down a penny, 1408. 23Me down a penny. Fifth wall down 20, Vector down 8, Spire down 15, Sixter down 13 cents, IBM down 54 cents. We have got small penny type losses here on what we seem to be following the most. Um, the Dow now down 132, uh, 120 now down only 120 on the Dow, and um, down 16 on S&P and down 65 on NASDAQ. That's what I have at the moment. Um, this market is not uh, not selling off like it's in trouble at all. It's it's just not. Uh, I think we because we've had three days now of, of down dips. Uh, this market has quickly gone oversold. There's there doesn't seem to be heavy volume coming in either. Uh, so it looks like it's uh, 
a market that could be a turnaround bounce back here pretty quick. We'll have to see how this all works out. There might be a series of, of recoveries, dips, recoveries all day long here as it sort of finds direction. But if we don't get a serious throw out the baby with the bathwater kind of sell off, if we don't get that, we're going to go higher uh, because this market is not, it, it must get direction and it must get real concern from holders of stock to want to get out. And I don't know why you would want to dump Apple and Microsoft and Google and Amazon, um, Facebook. Why would you sell any of these stocks where these companies are raking it in uh, hand over fist? They're making just a gobs amount of money. Uh, they're buying back their own stock in gobs. Uh, there's limited downside to this overall market because you take the, the FANG stocks into play here. Just these guys control 20 to 30 percent of the market right there uh, of the entire indexes. If they're not going to drop off, you, you're not getting the rest of the market to go with it. And, and if they actually begin to bargain hunt their way back up again, this market will go higher. And so, um, you know, I don't see I don't see the end of the world here. Certain stocks individually, sure, they'll have a tough time. Robin Hood, they'll have a tough time because they don't deserve to be at 45 a share. But um the overall market nah, i don't see that uh, don't see that taking place matterport is up nine cents now to 1418 23 and me is up a penny i got two greens on my uh, on my chart now um gamestop down only 48 cents atip is only down seven cents now it might turn green at any moment um gamestop could turn green at any time amc's down a buck that won't take much to turn it around so far down a quarter that won't take anything to turn it around uh these stocks could all be green within the hour. Um, fifth wall down 20, Vector down 7, Spire down 15, Sixth Arrow down 13 cents. This is not an issue. Home Depot up 260 now, definitely on the way up because it had its bad day two days ago. Uh, IBM down 42 cents at 139.05. It looks like it's bottoming out here too. It doesn't seem to want to participate in the sell-off. Uh, Microsoft down 77 cents, 99 cents on the downside. I mean, really? That's it? That's that's your plan? That's your whole plan? Down a dollar five on Apple. That that's your whole plan. Get her. That was it. There, there's no plan. There's no there's no get me out at any price because I think the world is going to end plan. That's not happening here. It's not it's not happening. We're not getting the we're down a third of a point on the Dow. Where's the panic? Where's the worry? It was there 300 negative 15, 20 minutes ago. It isn't here in the real market. Maybe the pre-market boys were trying to manipulate it lower, but the real market's going, how much you got? What do you want to sell? I'll, I'll buy it. Apple is going, look, we got to buy $375 million of the stock every single day. Okay? On average, we at Apple need to buy $375 million of our stock every day because we are on the hook. We have committed to the market to buy $90 billion of our stock back this year. So we need $375 million a day to make that happen because we can't buy it on Saturdays and Sundays. Only Monday to Friday when you're open. So you want to give us some stock here? We'll buy it. We'll, we'll pick it up. Uh, 145 a share. Uh, you know, a million shares is $145 million. Uh, uh, you know, we could buy almost uh, 3 million shares a day. No problem. Uh, give us the stock. Uh, Apple stock so far has traded um, uh, 9.2 million. Uh, in theory, uh, uh, the Apple could have bought 3 million already of that. And today, uh, of all days, if the stock wants to stay down to these levels, Apple might back, buy back 10 million of its, of its own shares today. It, it's not limited to 375 million in one day. It can do 500 million today, a billion today, and do nothing tomorrow. It's up to Apple's discretion when and how much stock to buy back on the open market. So, you know, 9.2 million traded. Uh, you know, they, they bought a million already or, or two. Um, how much you want to dump? Uh, we'll, we'll take it off you. There's all kinds of hedge funds and mutual funds that will buy Apple as it goes down. Tons of them because they're looking long term. They're not looking for next week. They're not looking to flip the stock in 15 minutes. They're here to buy it for another 25 years. Uh, every week, every month, every year, millions of people retire in the U.S. and Canada and in Europe. And they, uh, they now start to draw on their pensions. 
And every year, month, millions of people are hired by these organizations, like the teachers, the teachers of the world, uh, firefighters of the world, uh, uh, civil servants of the world, factory workers of the world. You know, it's turnover. Just it's just human beings running out of energy and new ones coming in. You get this turnover. You have new em new employees contributing to the pension fund and older employees withdrawing until they pass away and then they don't withdraw anymore. And all the money they put in just keeps on growing. Um, Canada Pension Plan, I mean, it, it, it's a winner. It just keeps growing and grow getting bigger and bigger. More money keeps coming into this thing every month from all these Canadians. They have to invest more money every month into investments that give them a return. And if you're a pension fund and 20% uh, of your money has to go into the market and um, you need a return on your money that's better than a GIC, which is 1% every five years or something like that, one of the stocks you're going to buy is Apple because you don't care about the next two weeks or two months or next quarter for Apple. You're thinking down the road a decade or two for Apple. And uh, you buy now because in 20 years, it's going to be $1,000 a share, comparatively speaking. And uh, you stayed up with inflation and you stayed ahead of interest rates and you're just, you know, picking up this cheap stock. That's the mentality out there about big business with uh, big pension funds with, with, with mutual funds like or stocks like Apple and, and Microsoft and Google and Amazon. And yeah, that's the deal. So. Welcome to the Market 101, kids. Uh, here we are. We're down 174 on the Dow. Uh, this is not a uh, sell-off. Uh, you know, they're, they're, if we were a sell-off, we'd be down 1,000 points right now. Right now, we'd be down 1,000 points. We're down 158. This is a nothing burger. Uh, we're down 0.46 of a percentage points. I mean, really? Uh, why did I get up? I don't even know why I'm here. 1397 on SoFi. Ooh, we're down a quarter. Uh, GameStop down two bucks to 155. Those of you who've written options, you might want to be buying some contracts back. Uh, ATIP up 385 down 14 cents. AMC down a dollar 70. Matterport down 14 cents. 23 me down four. We have a little selling wave here, but it isn't much of a selling wave. Uh, very, very. Uh, quiet anyway there you go <sighs> welcome everybody um, glad you're here um, nice to see you um, agree with me great don't agree with me okay it's okay uh, anyway there it is uh, and uh, what can I say welcome to the show uh, even Macy's is up six percent this morning can you believe it Macy's, that's brick and mortar, uh, and yet um, GameStop was down two bucks. If Macy's is up, GameStop should be double. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, we're having all kinds of fun here. Um, what else is going on? Uh, I've been having, I've been playing puts to offset the losses and had decent success. Uh, Benjamin Duncan bought the dip. Morning all from Chris. Good morning, Chris. Um, and uh, here, I, I, I am all, Bruce is still old school in his thinking. He doesn't understand the way the market is today. Oh, okay. Uh, have another bloody morning. At least we're getting numb to it at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you think about an October 145 call for Apple? Um, I don't mind it. Um, um, I don't mind it. Uh, where are we at now in Apple? 145.08 right at the money. Uh, uh, but if you can afford to go longer, uh, I like it more. Uh, but I, I don't mind that bet. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Announced this morning, Spire Global receives a, a DASA, DASA Next Gen Space Tech funding of 800,000 euros uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, RF signals detection and uh, geolocation project. All right. I, I hope that's good. I, I hope that means good things. We're down 40 cents on, on Spire, so uh, I don't know. I doubt the stock is reacting to this announcement. It's just reacting to the market, I think, uh, at the moment. Uh, we're at uh, down 110 on the Dow. That's it. Just 110 points. Now down to 105. S&P down 13.95. Or now down 15. And NASDAQ down 74 points. That's it. Um, jobless claims dropped to a pandemic low of 348,000. In a sign, company still hiring despite the Delta. There you go. It should move markets higher. But then again, it might move markets lower because people are thinking the economy is overheating and we're going to have higher interest rates. 
uh, go figure. Uh, a good economy is bad news for the stock market. Uh, when, it, when did that become the new thinking? Uh, I don't understand, obviously, the new markets. Uh, there's the problem I have is I obviously don't understand the new thinking of the markets where people who make money are losers and people who lose money are winners. I, I've got to get with the program. You know, I just, there it is. Uh, what can I say? I respectfully disagree, Bruce. Okay, it's all cool. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, NSH Spire had a $22 par target as soon as the merger was announced. And, and I think the target is still there. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's always a bull market somewhere. I, I guess you're right. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, how Robinhood uh, uh, ever got on the exchange is beyond me. Well, you know, there's uh, commissions. There were lots of commissions available to uh, make this happen, and uh, here we are, forty-four eighty-five. Uh, wow, you know, yikes. Uh, anyway. Uh, Bruce, you got to get with the times here. Uh, yes means no, no means yes. Uh, you, you, come on, you got to get with the program. Uh, lower GameStop means we're going to buy. Happy days. GameStop one fifty four eighty down two twenty six. Um, and uh, I'm averaged at thirteen ninety one a Matterport. Would you consider writing covered calls for January to get exercised? I'd still be up thirty plus percent. Uh, uh, Carl, you know you can do that. Of course, I mean you can do anything you want. It's your stock. You can play any way you like to play it. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I worry about uh, for any of you who are thinking of writing call options on Matterport, say you're going to write 15s or something like that, even so far, the, the worry I have is that the potential of the stock to run up five to seven bucks a share is incredibly good. It's a very high probability. I don't know what moment, but when the moment has, there'll be no second guessing. It'll just go without you. The train will leave the station. And if you've written 15s and the stock goes to 20, you either have to buy the calls back for a very expensive price or be taken out. Now, <clears throat> look, you get taken out at 15 and you were, you're given two bucks a share premium or whatever the premium is. You're selling at 17. What's wrong with buying the stock now at 1408? Both of them are 1408 this second, by the way, so far in medical. Buying at 1408 and getting taken out at 17. What's wrong with that trade? There's nothing wrong with that trade. That's a, that's a three dollar gain on your investment. That's over twenty percent. I mean, you could literally just buy them now, write the calls now, and then sit back and look and and let it get taken out. If you don't get taken out between now and January, you don't get taken out. But chances are you might. On the other hand, you might be sitting here between now and January, waiting to be taken out. Stock trading at fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars a share, and you're not getting taken out because the calls are not being exercised, they're being flipped, which is usually what calls are being done by. Uh, so, you know, what you should be doing, I think, is you should be buying back your call, the $15 call, <clears throat> and turn around and write a $17.50 call for next year June at the same price you're buying the $15 call for, or hopefully getting a higher price because you're going further out in time. I would hope that, that you would do that and not sit there like this and go, well, I'm just waiting for my 20% return as soon as I get taken out. That's, a, that's the deal. Because then what are you going to do? Uh, you might as well roll over now while it's happening and take advantage. So, sure, you can do that with Matterport. You can do it with SoFi if you want to write $15 contracts on this stock for January. Uh, yeah, knock yourself out. But uh, be prepared to deal with the potential second step if it happens. It could be the shares go to 12. They could go down to 12, and you could buy these calls back for a buck. And take the dollar profit and now write 1250 contracts. You could do that, maybe, but are you prepared to do it? If you're if you're mentally set and able to handle the stress of that, knock yourself out. But you have to know going in, you know, what the potential is. Anyway, there you go. Um, let's go. Uh, Carter, how much time do you want a long-term contract? How much time do you want left on a long-term contract before you realize a loss in a roll? I know prices dropped sharply the last month. Well, um, again, if you've got January contracts, I, I'm telling you not to do a thing. Just wait this out. Uh, because the, the, as fast as they go down, they can go up just as quick. But you've got to have faith in the investment. If, if your faith has been shaken because they've gone down and you just don't believe that 
they'll ever go back again, you know, uh, then that's your opinion and do what you must do. But my opinion on it is uh, you either average down on these things and get some more super cheap or you buy lower in the money contracts to just add to your position and uh, with a recovery, uh, uh, enjoy, enjoy money. I mean, enjoy making money. There it is. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's go. Um, and uh, I've been playing with the market watch game where you can trade fake money and on just stocks. A game I started in March. I bought a hundred grand in various companies. I'm I'm now at fourteen percent total return. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Um, and uh, let's go. Um, yeah. Well, this question will be asked. Obviously, if the shares don't move between now and January, yeah. But if they, uh, in the next month, these stocks all go up 40 to 50% apiece, this discussion becomes mute all of a sudden. Uh, you won't be asking me this question anymore, but I get it. Uh, I know the kind of questions I'm going to get depending on how the market is doing. Been around long enough to figure that out. Um, we're at uh, 1422, 1425 on SoFi, up 16 cents now. 802 on 23 me, that's green to a penny. Um, so far, it's only down 18 cents to 14.04 now. It's back up to 14.04 coming up. Uh, 11, per, 11 cent drop on ATIP right now, 3.87 at the moment. And uh, Robinhood at 45.68. The Dow down 84, uh, S&P down 8, NASDAQ down 51. There's where we're at right now. And let's see what's happening here. Uh, well, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think five months is a long time. Yes, it is. And if everything is okay, then it could be in the money by then. But Biden is president. I'm worried about more lockdowns. Well, uh, you know, there would be more lockdowns if there are more cases of the virus. And if there are more cases of the virus, you have more people in the hospital. If you have more people in the hospital, you probably have more casualties. And if the casualties are now spreading to children, uh, and young adults, uh, that is a problem. I don't care where you live, uh, Germany, France, Italy, US, Canada, Japan, uh, children and young people getting ill and dying is not a good thing. Um, we can understand elders passing because of complicated medical issues. We understand that. But young, healthy people and children dying from this virus, we don't like that, uh, that no one can be happy with that. But uh, if your politics are such that you can't get over it, that you can't separate a virus from a politician, if you can't are unable to do that, you are going to have trouble with a lot of decisions you're going to have to make in your life and investment decisions because uh, you're, you're, you know, you're, you, you've got a mental block that's stopping you from maybe being objective. I don't know. I'm just... Just saying, kids, uh, viruses are not a political party tool to get elected or unelected. Viruses are viruses. That's, that's all they are. They don't care what you like, eat, sleep to, listen to music-wise, movie-wise, who you vote for, what your religion is. Viruses don't care. They just are viruses. And we have one right now that's a problem, and we've had it since last year it's a problem is it your problem maybe not maybe you guys are all of you watch me are completely healthy and don't know anyone who's ever had it and so it's just a make-believe thing in your world because your world it doesn't exist okay um in my world uh, i think i've experienced it um too close to to mention uh, but that's that's my issue you have your issues I've got my issues, but my my take is a virus is a virus. That's all it is. Nothing personal. It's just a virus. Uh, anyway, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, I just went into 1,000 ATIP. Uh, when do you think it's a good time to sell covered calls? <laughs> I love the sense of humor that you, some of you folks are giving me. Uh, I love it. And they're off. Matterport pulling ahead of SoFi around the first turn. Yeah, that's right. 1431 for Matterport. 1407 for SoFi. Matterport is in the lead. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I cringe how political this virus has gotten me too. Um, the hospital in my county in Florida is at its maximum capacity. Um, we have a hospital about two hours away from here, um, over the mountain pass over here towards, there's Nelson and then I think Castle Gar and Trail. And anyway, one of the hospitals there, they've notified, uh, it, they've, they've notified the public, um, we have no beds available for any emergencies whatsoever. You must go to medical center or such and such. In you know 40 minutes away, you have to go to that hospital. Um, this is the kind of news that's spreading more and more within our area as well. Um, because of course we are small, we have a bunch of small towns here in Southern British Columbia with small cities. So we have hospitals with six ICU beds, three, eight, 12. Uh, but um, we're hearing more and more uh, announcements um, about the, um, the lack of capacity available. So a lot of volunteer surgery has been canceled right now. Uh, artificial hips, uh, knee replacements, uh, uh, all canceled like until further notice uh, we we can't even book you um and so a lot of folks are, are dealing with cancer and, and, and other issues where they're not even going into the hospital because they're overrun with the virus up here in canada where we're at 84 percent vaccinated now adults at least one shot uh over 50 percent of two and yet this variant is uh, running rampant right now it's not good it's not good. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, yeah, Matterport and SoFi are fighting. SoFi 1402, Matterport 1429. Um, yep, I have people who have died and, and have had it. Yep, yeah, there you go. Going postal, um, various shares in there. I have another one. I started thinking I have a couple of SPACs in it, uh, following a lot of stuff. We have to get past the preemptive finger pointing with this pandemic. Um, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, it is, it is, uh, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's so many new rule changes at the DTC, DTC, D, DTTC to try to cover them self from the mother of all sorts. Of How long do they let GameStop and failure delivers continue to pile up and, and that add that to what we know are naked shorts in the GameStop real flow. Yeah, I mean, you know, you wonder uh, when will the time come that the, the 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 bridge will break down? When will that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Roll on the scene. Come on, GameStop. I want you lower. I want to get a deal here. Um, let's see. Non-vaxxers say that people who wear masks and get the shots are idiots and sheep. The shot isn't to prevent the virus. It's not to die from it. Uh, the mask is to help reduce the spread of it. I agree. Thumbs up for Bruce. Thank you, guys. Um, let's see. Um, year. Oh, my God. I don't know. I haven't heard this. Uh, that's interesting. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, lockdowns won't happen if everyone everyone got vaccinated and wore masks. I don't think these people can understand that, though. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous out there. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, don't know. Don't know, kids. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid political comments, but, oh, it's tough. It's tough. It's really tough to avoid them. Uh, they're everywhere. It's really it's really frustrating that, uh, that the pol political stories are inside business. Uh, it is no business being there. Uh, I can't stand it. I want politicians staying where they belong. Uh, I want them out of my other life. I don't want them in the business life. I don't want them in my healthcare system. I want them being where they're supposed to be. Uh, stay in your, your capitals, stay in your committee rooms, pass laws, uh, and leave it at that. Stay out of my uh, the rest of it. Because you're not qualified as medical professionals. You're just not. And you're certainly not qualified to be business experts either. <laughs> That's for darn sure. Uh, man, oh, man. Uh, anyway, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, $14 on SoFi, fourteen twenty-eight on Matterport right now. Uh, the Dow down 56 points. That is it. Um, six terra went positive. 862, it's up. IBM down 65 cents. New York down uh, 52, 62 points now. The Dow's down 62. We have uh, S&P down six, 
0.7. Oh, man. The ASDAQ down 59.4 at the moment. That's what we've got. Um, Luxury stocks tumble as China targets the super rich. There you go. China is targeting the super rich. Okay. Well, I wonder if the super poor in China are getting the money from the super rich. I don't see that happening. I don't see this distribution of wealth happening. I see the super rich being pounded by the authorities in the Communist Party. And um, I bet you some of the folks in the Communist Party are driving nicer cars these days. You got to wonder how that works. Of course, there are no, you can't check that out because, you know, that's confidential information. Uh, you, you can't see the kind of lifestyle these folks have. You can't see, uh, you know, how well their relatives are doing. You can't see how children of high-end politicians in China go to the best universities in the world. You can't see that. Uh, that's that's not a, a not available for viewing to the public. You can't you can't verify, you know, whether they're running a clean show or not. You can't verify that. That's that's state secret. Sorry, you're not going to tell you that. Fourteen twenty seven on Matterport. We're up eighteen cents, unchanged on twenty three and Me. Fourteen dollars on SoFi right now. That's where we're at. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, what can I say? What can I say? Thank you everybody for being here. Um, as we are watching this market this morning, uh, start off with uh, not a lot of negative. Uh, we were looking at 300 plus negative points on the Dow about an hour before we started trading. And uh, we're now down only 49 points on the uh, Dow 30. 49 point drop. Uh, that's all. Um, now it's 40. It's now 40 on the downside. So uh, we've got upward movement. Let me take a look at the Oh, Dow 30. Um, where are we at now? Here we go. Uh, the the um, the biggest losers, um, um, and we're down to about maybe half of them are down. Half of them are up now. Goldman down three bucks. Chevron down 280 because oil is underwater. Caterpillar down 240. Boeing down two bucks. America's Press down a buck 60. Nike down a buck 50. On the winning side of the Dow, we have United Healthcare up 440. They were down earlier. Home Depot up 240, Travelers up a buck 50, Johnson and Johnson up a buck 30, Procter Gamble up a buck 40, Merck up a buck 30, uh, Microsoft up a dollar, Honeywell up 60 cents, Cisco up 56, Coca-Cola up 34. So, you know, we got winners, we got losers, uh, but it's a moderate looking thing. It's a moderate looking number. It's not a, you know, we don't have like $10 losses and $8 losses and $7 loss. We don't have anything like that at all. So uh, we're, we're not getting a catastrophic um, sell-off in this market. The Dow is down 47 right now. Uh, SoFi at 14. Matterport at 14.30, up 30 cents on SoFi now. 21 cent gain on Matterport. One penny gain on 23 and Me. Um, ATIP down only a dime now. Um, Sexter up 11 cents. IBM still down 71 cents. The Dow down 33 points. Um, Apple, uh, sorry, uh, IBM is uh, bouncing off from its low of 138.34, now at 138.80, down 67 cents. Pennies, that's all. It's just pennies losses. Uh, um, over on uh, on Microsoft, we're up 71 cents on the day. And Apple, we're down only 79 cents on Apple. We were down to 144.52, 145.57. We've come back a dollar five on Apple to be down only 79 cents. Very good. Okay. Um, Robinhood, unfortunately, is still underwater, but it's only down 355 to 4625. I'm amazed at Robinhood not giving up the ghost with their god awful numbers. It's amazing to me. Uh, it just defies logic, but it, 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 this is not a logical market right now. We're down 258 on GameStop and 154.47. ATIP down 11. AMC down a buck 88. Matterport is up 18 cents. 23andMe is unchanged. Uh, we got Matterport at 1427, and we got SoFi at 1398. That is where we're at right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Bill, I think it's buy time. Um, let's go. Um, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, I'm glad you ate your Snickers bar. I don't know what or who that was this morning. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, 
the market is what the market is. The world is what the world is. Uh, we're down 14 points on the Dow. We're up a half a point on the S&P. It has turned positive on the S&P. NASDAQ down 26.9 points. The Dow down 19.3. So the markets are coming on and slowly coming on and slowly with little glitches coming back and a little bit more, a little bit more. The Dow 30 list right now, um, let's see here. I'll refresh this here. Uh, we have a $4.30 gain on United Healthcare. Home Depot up two fifty five, Travelers up a buck sixty, Procter Gamble up a buck thirty, Johnson Johnson up a dollar twenty, Merck up a dollar eighteen. Those are all stocks up a dollar or more. Uh, worse off, uh, the worst off is Chevron down two eighty, Caterpillar down two sixty, Nike down a buck ninety, Goldman Sachs down a buck eighty. That's coming on. Uh, Boeing down a dollar seventy, American Express down a dollar thirty. Those are the only stocks down a dollar or more on the Dow. We are running out of losers. Uh, with with the uh, smaller losses, the winners are having higher gains at the moment. Uh, this is what we're seeing as this market uh, tries to figure itself out. Uh, what can I say? Uh, when I'm back to work full time, so far I should be back up to where it should be. If not, I will keep buying until I am average down below 17 and then just write a ton of covered calls. There you go. Um, and let's see. Well, we'll see what's going on here. Uh, keep on keeping on kids. Uh, 14 bucks on SoFi, 14.25 on Matterport. ME is up two cents. Up one penny, 802 on 23 and me. It's positive. <laughs> uh, GameStop down 249, ATIP down 11, the Dow down 28 points, SP down 1.8, NASDAQ uh, down 34. That's all. That's, that's, that's it. Uh, if you were a betting man uh, on how, uh, under on how long the lawyers will drag these ATIP suits. Um, I wonder. I wonder if, um, if possibly, um, out of the twenty law firms or fifty law firms, however many are trying to launch lawsuits, uh, will eventually half of them disappear because they just can't sign up enough people to make it worth their while, and then you'll have maybe the top. Uh, I don't know. The top ten will get together and form a single lawsuit against the company uh trying to pool all their clients into one pot uh, it, it, years it will take years ever to get anywhere with this suit anywhere um i just i just fear that it's possible that a number of innocent shareholders who think they're being looked after by these guys might be approached for uh retainer money um to keep it going and that these lawyers will live off retainer money for years before they even attempt to go anywhere with this thing. I, I really don't know how it's going to end up. I can't call it. Um, but, you know, um, it, it is America. I'll tell you right now. It is the litigious society that America is that um, stock goes down and all of a sudden there's lawyers suing people for it. You know, rightly or wrongly, with merit, no merit, it is what it is. That's where we're at. SoFi, 14.05. Hey, 14.05 on SoFi. Okay, 14.30 on Matterport. 8.02 on 23 and Me. We got a little bit of upward movement here. Jen is up and about. Hi, Jen. A little bit of upward movement. A little bit of upward movement. A little. Just a little. Oh, come on. A little. Cloak, yeah, kind of pisses me off that considering SoFi had a really good earnings, Yet tank three dollars, and and it's way better company fundamentally. Yet a piece of you know what company like Robinhood is trading at forty six dollars a share. Yes, welcome to the stock market. Uh, things do e equilibrium their way out sooner or later, but might be later, but sooner or later it does all come home to roost. Uh, we shall see. Um, anyway, uh, Uncle Bruce, any insight on how CBT could affect the market? Uh, what is CBT? Um, wish I knew. Our path to the moon seems to be digging through the Earth's core until we get to the moon on the other side of the world. Laughing out loud, says Joe. <laughs> uh, 
Yes. Um, let's go. Here we go. Uh, let's avoid political talk and play a game to cheer everybody up in 2025 and four years from now. Which of our SPACs is the highest price? SoFi, Matterport? Just guessing game for fun. Or let's going postal. Funny thing about our about six months uh, for uh, for about six months, uh, the WWE was a good investment for me. I think I made fifteen percent on. It was pennies, of course, but still, any little bit when you're learning is good. Um, let's see. Um, I never guessed that the most stable stock would be GameStop and AMC. I, I never thought that would be the case. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, these ATIP losses are just ambulance chasers. Don't waste your money. Um, uh, good morning, Jen. Everyone's saying hi to Jen. Jen is being uh, recognized. She's here. SoFi will come back. Patience is a virtue. We will look back at this moment and laugh about it. Um, 1407 on the stock right now. Now 14, so we're jumping back. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, you know, anytime stock drops, uh, some law firm will try to scope out potential victims for the class action. It's like chasing ambulances for stocks. Yep, yep. SPAC list. Brucey, uh, get it yesterday? Got it, Aaron, because I haven't had time to upload it. I, I got it. I got it. I, I thank you. I get 50 emails a day, and after a couple days of not reading them, I got 150 to go through. So much junk, so much. Tell them how many hate. emails you have in your inbox. Oh, 5,000. <laughs> I, I have 5,000 in e emails in my inbox. Uh, I keep them. Uh, many. I keep many of them. Uh, yeah, I can always, if a lawyer calls me up and says, hey, listen, uh, you were uh, contacted by someone, uh, the cops are looking for them, or we have evidence again. Do you, did you get an email? I go, yeah, yeah, I, I can pull that for you. I mean, <laughs> so any hate email that comes my way, I got them. Yeah, I can pass them on. Uh, oh. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never, I never, I delete the, you know, whatever, but I, I keep a lot. Yeah. In his inbox. Uh, in my inbox. That's where they belong. Uh, that's all, they're safe there. <laughs> they're always there. Anyway, Jen, don't give oh. Uncle Bruce a bagel until SoFi is about 20 bucks a share. Laughing out loud. Uh oh. Uh, and Cloak is saying, so far is my bet for 2025 over MTR, MTTR. But it's definitely going to be a rough time getting there. Uh, okay. Uh, look, uh, Aaron, uh, yeah, of course, no worries. Just make sure you got it. I'm in, this, I'm in the same. I get tons of emails a day, and it just gets ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, it's just insanity. You, you have no idea how many scam emails I get. Um, oh, so I get all these scam emails that want me to do like a, a – an, they want to do an advertising campaign with this channel, and they can't spell – Advertising, they, they can't pay. They can't spell the. You know, yo, I get some They're real legit. scary stuff. John saying good morning, Jen. Good morning, uh, Pete. Uncle Bruce, is it legal to sell an op to Is it legal to sell to open a put contract for January twenty twenty three and use the proceeds to fund a call? Uh, Jan uh, June seventeenth, twenty twenty two. Um, you can use the funds to do anything you want. Yeah, I think you do. That if I don't know for sure, if you're gonna write a put, you may have to have capital in reserve your broker will tell you yeah. so your broker will tell you whether you have access to your cash or not so i can't help you there uh, uh jen uncle bruce needs a hug um storage oh, oh, uh, strange uncle bruce i don't get spam email laugh out loud ah um uh bpcy five dollar five pound donation hey this is good uncle bruce i sold a put contract on atip for at 22.50 which expires this Friday. Should I sell it now or should I just let it buy the 100 ATIP at 2250? <laughs> uh, first of all, you you sold the put, so you would be buying it back now. Uh, you wouldn't be selling it now; you'd be buying it back. Uh, so whatever it's going for, um, ATIP is sitting at 380. That contract has got to be 19, 20 dollars, somewhere in that range. That's what you got to pay for it to buy it back. Anyway. Uh, you want to close that out and just buy it back and be done with it. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Hi. What do you say? Hey, hi. Hey, hey. I notice you're wearing a sweatshirt. It was cold this morning when I uh, <laughs> sat here, and I'm waiting for you now to open all the windows, and it'll get cold again. I don't, I don't trust you because uh, hey. you get up and you open up all the windows. I see blue sky. I'm opening all the windows. And it gets cold in here. So I'm, I'm you know, I don't want to get Those a chill. Those people who live in air conditioning all the time. Yes. Can appreciate how nice it is just to be able to open your windows. That's true. Yeah. That's true. We we love doing that in Palm Desert. The shoulder seasons. Open no the windows. Heat, no AC. Open the windows at night. Shut them in the morning. Yes. As it heated up, we yeah. shut them in the morning. Keep the cool air in, and then after break down around noon, we had to turn the air conditioning on because it got warm then. But then we got to shut it off around six at night. 
got dark, yeah. cooled up, opened the windows again, shut the air off and let the cool air Just in. Just go to sleep to the, the chorus of crickets. Crickets and <laughs> those birds that go, roo, roo. The, those doves. are doves? Yeah. Roo, roo. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had doves, of course, in the, in the chimney. Oh, we have them everywhere. Wildlife, you know, desert wildlife. Hummingbirds. And, Hummingbirds. Yeah. yeah, the first time you see a roadrunner, you go, that's a roadrunner. It looks just like the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Just like a roadrunner. Look at that. Wily coyote. Like, oh, my God, it's a roadrunner. Genius. <laughs> oh. running, after, uh, running after bugs and whatever they can treat the down. The roadrunner. I never heard a beep beep. Before. Never heard the beep beep. No, yeah. never heard that. Uh, but uh, someone, yeah. <laughs> someone will have to tell us if they can fly. I've never seen them fly. They're really good jumpers. Yeah, I don't know if they can. But I think they're kind of like chickens. They, that... they might have like limited lift yeah. capacity. Like if they uh, really had to, they, they might can get, get up on like three or four flaps. Well, they can be... get. I think they get up like eight or ten feet. Okay, but uh, but I don't know if they can sustain. I'm not sure. Fly, fly. Never bothered studying that. Uh, you know. Never studied. No, never. I never studied road runners. No, no. You never studied. So what's on the menu for today? Oh, I'm wondering if grape jelly is in order today. Oh. Yeah, maybe grape okay. jelly today. Uh, get some sugar energy going. It's okay. Nice crunchy bagel. Get a nice sugar down in about 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I can have a nap and <laughs> sleep and try to recover. Okay. Sure. Jen, right. thank you so much. Awesome sauce stuff. Uh, Aaron says, yeah, I got, I got a few uh, emails from some Nigerian princes. I, I sent over a 1,000, and they promised me they'll send me a million return. Sounds good, right? Oh, yeah. It, it's legit. Um, I got an email from Netflix saying my password needs to be reset. Netflix, N-I-T-F-L-I-X. Yes, Netflix. Um, so <laughs> still, Macy's still ripping. Hey, here's a tip. Buy GameStop, let it moon, and then you can buy whatever you want. Just a thought. Uh, just, you know, uh, put it out there. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Did they get IRS calls so you get CRA calls? I don't know. Uh, do you guys get those kinds of, I don't know, we get robo calls all the time. Uh, uh, we don't answer them, but uh, the, the, the story is that uh, this is the RCMP calling. You must call this number immediately or you will face arrest. Yeah, right. Like the cops are going to call you that we're going to arrest you. Like the cops? <laughs> really? Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, here it is. Air quality in California is so bad, we leave the air conditioning on overnight so we're not choking on smoke. There's, that's unfortunate, oh, yeah. isn't it? That is uh, sad. Um, uh, Uncle Bruce, roadrunners are bad for the environment. They kill horny toads, which are endangered. Uh, let's see, let's see, as a uh, IT professional, I've seen inboxes with 300,000 plus items. So I'm a nothing. I'm, I'm just a nothing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jelly, jelly, jelly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we get those robot calls all the time. Really annoying when you're also expecting work calls and such. Um, yep, yep, yep. A uh, U.S. feds act on once and crack down those calls. Um, and, uh, well, Canadians are polite. Is it okay if we come over there and put you in jail, eh? Not after the craft dinner. Not until after that. Oh, me too. So it works both ways for us then. That's right. <laughs> we leave our AC on every night in Louisiana. Laugh out loud. Apparently, if you answer the robot calls and put your phone on mute right away, they will take you off their list after a few tries since they use the voice recognition software to verify it's a valid number. Um, your extended warranty is about to expire, phone calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, VCR you bought in 1978. Uh, the extended warranty is about to recover, uh, 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 expire. Would you like to spend $25 a month to keep it insured? Uh, you know, we don't, we don't know how to fix it, but in case it breaks down, at least you have insurance. Again, something can't be fixed or you'll never get your money back. Would you mind sending us $25? Uh, you know, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we get the extended uh, car warranty calls all the time. There you go. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, we get those all the time. Just yeah. click here and we'll fix it. Just click here and we'll make it all go away. Oh, will you ever? Uh, you will make it all go away. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> 
What can I say? Uh, it's goofy. It's goofy. 1405 on SoFi, 1428 on Matterport. That's the race right now between those two stocks. I'd like to see them. I'd like to be calling that race at $25 and $26 a share, though. Uh, we have the Dow up 5.5 points. We have S&P up 3.7, and we have NASDAQ up 2. So for a moment, we had the three indexes all green for a moment. Don't know how long this is going to last, but that's what we got. Uh, oil still down a dollar fifty-six to sixty-three ninety, and that's where we're at right now. Fourteen oh one on SoFi, fourteen twenty-nine on Matterport, and there it is, kids. That is our uh, that is our world in which we're living right now. Uh, not a lot to get excited about here. Uh, we're down fifty-five cents on Fifth Wall. We're up uh, down eleven on Vector. We're down sixty-five on Spire. We're up nine on Sextera. We're on IBM down eighty cents. Dow is up one point three. Microsoft up a dollar. My Apple down fifteen cents. Tesla down eight dollars. Bed Bath and Beyond up down nineteen. BlackBerry down nineteen. Royal Caribbean down one sixty-five to seventy-five fifty-six. Going lower on the cruise stock. Amazon up twenty-eight dollars. Uh, Facebook down seventy-one cents. Google down five forty. Target up seventy-nine cents after a lousy day yesterday. J.P. Morgan down twenty-one cents. Costco up five bucks after a lousy day yesterday. Walmart up fifty-eight cents. Cisco up a dollar one fifty-six bucks. And the Nvidia up three thirty to one ninety-three. Goldman down a dollar seventy-six. Not giving up much ground here. Uh, Goldman is reluctantly giving up any ground. It's a three ninety-seven a share. Long-term calls are the way to go on Goldman Sachs. Absolutely long-term calls. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. There you go. Worst Canadian is Ted Cruz from Calgary, Alberta. You can you can have him. You guys can keep this guy. Uh, we don't want anything to do with this guy. Um, yeah. I I I know that he renounced his Canadian citizenship, and we're not going to give it back to him if he wants it back. You're not coming back, pal. You stay down there in Texas. You're Texas's problem. Enjoy Texas. You enjoyed little old lion Ted Cruz. Oh wow! Uh, so glad he's not here. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. Jen says you're gonna get in trouble. Uh, well, you know there are good Canadians and bad Canadians, and he's a bad Canadian. Uh, so you know now he's an American. Uh, good riddance, as far as I'm concerned, with this guy. Uh, we don't need him. Um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, we wanted to keep him, but he's in, he's in Cancun, says Coyote. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, Lou. Yeah, yeah, good old Ted Cruz. Um, hey, I got a call from a publisher, Clearinghouse, um, and uh, telling me I won $10 million. I played along. He gave me a bunch of info to write down, which I didn't. When he asked me to read it back to him, and I, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't. Uh, uh, he called me a liar and started saying very naughty things about my mom. Uh, oh, no, that's not fair, Bruce. I still think you guys should have to take Rosie and Whoopi. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Uh, where are we at here? So fight 1403. Uh, oh, okay. 1425 on Matterport. Matterport's winning the race to the moon here. Um, the Canadian bureaucrat who got to tear up Ted Cruz's uh, Canadian paperwork when he announced the decision must have been grinning from ear to ear and still is. Uh, yeah, he's no longer Canadian. Yay! Oh, lordy, lordy, Lou. <laughs> well, uh, good old Ted Cruz. Um there's only one of those. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I love watching the streamers who get up virtual boxes set of virtual boxes to, to trap fake IT scammers who prey on old people. SoFi is killing me right now. I bought five $15 in the money calls a while back when it was trading near 1570 to 16 range. Ugh, uh, right now it's at $14. It's only down 22 cents. The stock is giving up pennies and it goes up in dollars. Uh, so get ready for the, for the other side of this. You know, I made $100 on my Royal Caribbean put in one day. I took the profits, and I'm just, just going to run. There you, there you go. Uh, Jan calls. Ja, I bought, uh, so, so far, January, you bought January as well. Hang in there. Just just hang tough. Yeah, you're, you're not far away from a nice profit on this trade. You don't need a lot for this stock to make you money. Just stick around. Enjoy the show. Uh, 1422 on Matterport, up 13 cents. The Dow down 53 points. We were up five points a few minutes ago. We're down 53 on the Dow, and we're down one point on S&P. We're down six on NASDAQ. The Dow 30 
the biggest movers and shakers right now, the winner, United Health, up six bucks. Travelers up a buck seventy-five. Losers, um, Chevron down three, Goldman down three, Boeing down three, Caterpillar down two eighty. Thank you, Miss Jennifer, so much. Um, IBM down a buck, Disney down a dollar. It just, it's just, uh, you know, more losers and winners on the Dow. But no, no one company is just getting hammered here. It's not happening. We don't have one company going really badly at all. So. I have nothing to finger point at for why the Dow is doing what it's doing. All I can do is have a bagel and and try to get the markets to go higher by having this bagel for you. I do this for you, um, although I am hungry. So thank you all for being here. Uh, SoFi, it's at thirteen ninety six now. GameStop one fifty five oh five. Matterport 14.24. So hopefully, as I have the bagel, the market will go higher. The Dow is down 64 right now. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Don't sesame seed bagel, baby. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah. Mm. The warranty place at a dealership I used called me to extend um, mine when it was about to lapse. I said no, and they got nasty and made threats. They did it again, but my lawyer was with me. Laugh out loud. Way to go. Good morning, Seth. How you doing? Bagel, 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 baby. If you're brave, you know, you can try some elderberry jam. Elderberries? <clears throat> Is there jelly? Oh, there's jelly. Anyone remember Ed McMahon, McMahon giving people huge checks on their doorstep? <laughs> some jelly in your belly will make the stocks go higher. Thirteen ninety nine on SoFi. 155 oh eight on GameStop. Uh 1425 on Matterport. 803 on 23 and me. But the Dow's still down 78 points. Let's have some more bagels and see what's going on here. Maybe we can get the markets to go higher. How about that? Lawyers made the people straighten up real quick. Um, Uncle Bruce, I managed to buy those September uh, uh, 10th 200 covered calls and locked in a $2 profit per share. Nice job. You rock, man. I, I am really, I'm pleased. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Uh, way to go. Um, um, what's the best SoFi call to look at in January? Um, uh, well, you know, if you can get in the money, but I, I'm not sure if they're cheap enough to buy because um, they have a high premium. They really do. But that, that tells me the market is expecting a run on SoFi sooner or later, and that's why these calls have such a premium. I wrote uh, January. I wrote a GameStop 180 strike call last week, expiring 20 of August. That's tomorrow. I got 500 bucks for it. I can buy it back now for 18 dollars US. Do that. Do that and and eliminate it. Yep. Yeah. Get rid of it. Um, Sean, I bought uh, the SoFi dip, and then I bought the next dip. What What do I do now? You just Just wait. Wait, run it higher, run, buy a dip, whichever. Mm, mm, mm. I hope she's okay too. Bagel, bagel, bagel. Woohoo! GameStop going higher. 155.30. Yo! Mm.
Oh yeah. Matterport, 14, 17, 23 and me, 801. Dow, down 67. Oh boy. Okay. Uncle Bruce, why buy back the contract on the day before it expires if he's up so much money? Isn't it better just to let it die? If it's worth only $18, it's an 18 cent contract, your upside is 18 more cents for the next 24 hours of your time. You buy it back now, close it out. If the stock has a little rally today, Right now, 154.88. But let's say the stock goes up to 158 to 160 later this afternoon. He could now write a contract for next Friday at whatever price he chooses for a bigger premium. If he waits until Monday to write a new contract for Friday next week, he's down to four days. Where right now he's at seven days, eight days with the, with the weekend. He might get another dollar, dollar fifty premium now to write a contract that expires next Friday, as opposed to until waiting until Monday. That's why you pay 18 cents to get it out and bring in a buck 50 more per contract, potentially on a higher premium right. That's why you do it. These dollars are huge. This, this is a 150 profit or $2 profit that might be available by taking out this 18 cent contract and getting rid of it. There's no upside left on the contract, none. Be done with it and now write a new one. Look at writing a new one, depending on the day here. Um, and, and lock in a larger premium because you're locking in all day today and all day tomorrow uh, time for next week Friday. Uh, that's why. Okay. Shannon is saying, I closed my core position in Mat Matterport <coughs> to move more into SoFi last week um, uh, because of the long upward trends with large investment banks at the economic news gets worse. Home buying sentiment, unemployment numbers, fall, failing CPI, and so on. Okay. So far now, 1397. Uh, Matterport, 1417. 23 me up a penny at 802. The Dow down 113 points. The bagel's not helping the Dow. Let's keep trying that. There you go. That's what I'm waiting for. If a call is at the money, can the buyer owner of the contract exercise the call or does the call need to be in the money? Uh, uh, it depends on the brokerage firm you're dealing with. Um, you may or may not get anywhere with your brokerage firm. I'm not sure about the rules of the exchange and the options market. I don't actually know that. It just doesn't happen. I mean, it, it, it doesn't happen where a contract at the money gets exercised. It, because even if it's trading in a nickel, you're better just selling it for a nickel. You're making no money on the stock, getting the stock. Um, but again, I I know that there's all these short squeeze fantasy dreams about squeezing people with call options and all that. Um, I think it's up to the brokerage firm to make the call. Um, and then it, there might be deep language in the contracts, uh, how this works. Um, just a guess. Picking up more GameStop, 153.72. Uh, Bruce, I just filled a $10 SoFi call expiring Jan 22 for four ninety. I just filled a $10 SoFi call at four ninety. So you, I'm assuming you wrote the call at four ninety at a $10 expiry. 
So you're going to get a, a fourteen ninety if you're taken out, which is about a one dollar gain on the market right now. But I'm assuming that's what you're doing. Um, okay, Mark Gody saying this is the way. Thanks, Bruce Thumbs. Thank you, Robert. Um, and uh, okay, way to way to go. Okay, thirteen ninety two on SoFi, uh, fourteen oh eight now on Matterport down a penny. We're going red everywhere. One hundred twenty six point drop on the Dow right now. I'm oh, sorry, I bought it. Okay, you're long. Okay. So you bought the ten dollar call for four ninety. You only paid a one dollar premium. Good move. Good move. Okay. Damn it, Jim. I stopped looking for for good due diligence on Google and learned how to reverse my colors on my portfolio. What was red is now green and green is now red. I'm still down a ton, but my mood has improved. There you go. <laughs> down 149 on the Dow, down 10, 11 points. Now 11 points on S&P, down 34 on NASDAQ, down two bucks a barrel on oil. All right, we've got a negative market going here at the moment. SoFi 1391, Matterport 1414 up a nickel. Back up again. GameStop, 154, down three. Winners on the Dow, United Healthcare up five fifty, Cisco's up a dollar seventeen, Procter up a dollar seventeen, Travelers up a buck fifteen. Losers on the Dow, Goldman down four sixty to three ninety four, Caterpillar down four fifty, Boeing down four forty, Chevron down three thirty, Nike down two ninety four, American Express down two fifty, Visa down a buck sixty, three M down a buck sixty, Visa down a one sixty, Walt Disney down one fifty nine. There's your Winners and losers right at the moment on the Dow itself. Okay. All right. Why aren't we green, says John Van. Uh, I have paper this time, says Adventures of Duncan. I sold five $25 covered calls for January 22 at 410 a while back. Only green, only thing green for me. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, is this SoFi? Um, um, for SoFi, yes, for SoFi. There's the <laughs> yeah, it would help if you guys tell us the symbol. So you sold five covered calls for SoFi at 25 for January 20 at 410 a while back. Okay, and now and now the stock's at is at 1393. So the hope is that what I'm hoping for you is one, uh, you're up way up on your contract. Uh, but two, um, are you planning on buying it back uh, for a gain or are you gonna write it out? It's a long time. Long time to wait. Now the twenty-two January twenty-two at four ten, a twenty-five dollar contract is trading at seventy-four to seventy-seven now. Uh, at the moment, that's what I'm showing the bid ask at. So hopefully you got a real good premium for it. Robinhood back down again, 419 low, down 419. Robinhood's reversed its little rally. SoFi 1395, Manaport 1417. GameStop 154.04 down three, ATIP down 14 cents. Um, AMC down 188, uh, 23andMe down a penny, the Dow down 172, okay? The last quarter of my bagel, I'm gonna chomp on it here. Um, Let's see.
When is this going to get fun? What, Bruce? You got to make it fun, man. Hey, help me out. Now you know why brokers um, um, go to the bar after the market. And they party hard when markets are good. <laughs> now you know. Spire, 921, down 69 cents. Six tear up, 12 cents, 862. All right. 13 out of 3 on so 5. 14, 13 on Matterport. Oh, man. Oh boy, down 180 on the Dow, the low of the day. We're at the low of the day now for the Dow. We're down 14 on S&P, down 44 NASDAQ. We were positive on all three 20 minutes ago. Turned around. Toyota, Volkswagen, and Ford face new production cuts. Headline. Headline, more than half of Gen Z investors admit to trading while drunk. <laughs> that might explain a couple of comments I've been getting. <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know, kids. <laughs> oh, my. You know, they should start the SPACs at 8 bucks and save us all the heartaches. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do not drink and trade. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Twitter is a fun drunk, too. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I remember when I played music in uh, in uh, Ontario. I used to play the oompa pa music. Um, and uh, it didn't matter where we were, if it was a licensed venue, licensed venue, 99%. All of our gigs were licensed venues. Um, weddings and Oktoberfests and uh, <clears throat> the Saturday night dance at the at the Legion. Wherever we were, um, I made a point of, of generally not drinking on the job, especially if I was if I was driving to the gig and back. I wouldn't drink, and. Um, what you would witness on stage as the night went on was just breathtaking. Uh, you would see uh, the crowd arrive, you know, while you're setting up. People arriving and they're all in their finery, you know, it's Saturday night and going out. Got the, got the guys in their, you know, white shirts and ties and jackets and the women in their nice dresses and uh, or beginning of a wedding, you know, wedding reception, everyone's dolled up and, uh, you know, uh, everyone having a good time and, and celebrating the, the, the marriage of so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and everybody passing along their best wishes and all of that, you know. Uncle Bruce, I'm about to learn a valuable lesson tomorrow with ATIP tomorrow. Buy calls way out. Hmm. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, at the beginning of the night, you're watching everybody on their best behavior. 
you got you know you got your 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 children you've got the uh, you know the the young uh, the teenagers you've got the uh, you got the you know the the twenty somethings and you got the thirty somethings and the forties and the fifties and the seventies and eighties and you're just watching you're watching the mood change as the night goes on and of course you know around eight nine o'clock the kids start to disappear because mom and dads have to take kids home. So that takes away some of the 20 and 30 something moms and dads, you know, because they're taking their kids out. and off they go. And it's, it's just, you're just watching life evolve in front of you as the night goes on. And, uh, you know, by nine o'clock, the, uh, the, the drinking is really going full speed ahead now. And uh, you'll start to notice some of the grandparents are leaving now because they're, you know, tired and enough. they've had enough and off they go. And now the crowd is in that uh, sort of 20 to, 50 Party. year range and uh, <laughs> you, you, you see those who are under stress who are really trying to relieve stress by drinking and uh, then you can see the fist fights uh, then you, you see the the bravado between the males uh, oh, yeah. you know putting out their chest now the bravado uh, alcohol making them do stuff they would not normally do then the women uh, you see the cat fights and the nastiness and then you see the lovers. Uh, you see those who get amorous when the alcohol kicks in. Uh, you see people being amorous that you wouldn't think would be amorous, uh, and normally they wouldn't, but the alcohol just makes it all go away. Um, and then you get the people come off the stage asking if you could play a tune of some kind. You guys you know, playing the Aerosmith? You going to play the Aerosmith? We're a, we're a polka band. We're playing polka. <laughs> you play the Aerosmith? Uh, you play some Led Zeppelin? Uh, you just kind of go, ah, hey, we're working on that on the next set, hoping that they pass out by then. Um, you know, you see it all. I have a story. I, here's a story. Okay. So when Bruce would be playing on a Saturday night, if it was in town at one of the many German clubs, sometimes his sister would come to keep me company. And we went to, like, the Alpine Club or somewhere. And we were both wearing our dirndls. Show them what a dirndl looks like. Well, a, 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 a dirndl, uh, you, you put on a white blouse, uh, low-cut white blouse, and then you put this dirndl on top, which is a, a costume or German costume dress that would have that would be a low-cut as well and would kind of boost the, uh, the assets a little bit. It has whalebone or, well, yeah. no longer whalebone, but, but some kind of support, some support underneath the, uh, the yes. bottom of the you-know-whats, and that would kind of hefty up, up the old up assets front and center, yes. put them up front and center and of course guys love women wearing dirndls oh now, yeah they love Bruce's that. sister was has, blessed she has was, she wonderful was assets she was in their 20s she was very well very blessed, blessed. Uh, yeah. yes she in was, those days she was very blessed and this guy came up and asked her for a a, a waltz polka to waltz, dance to dance but his head came to about here. Yeah, he was on her. He was, he was, a, so, he was quite a bit shorter than she was. He was getting every penny out of that dance. Like he, he was, was, he was burying himself. He was, in it, it was, it was and, back to mama. And she's just kind of pulling back and looking at the top of his head, and he's on stage watching this, and had to turn his back to the mic because he was laughing, was laughing so, so loud. hard. I couldn't. And stop. then you got. Norbert laughing, so he's turned around. Second guy in the band, he turned around. We both couldn't, we could play, but we couldn't look. And now everybody's looking at them on the floor, trying to figure out what the band is laughing at. And this this guy, nope, he was absolutely oblivious. Oblivious to what was going on. And your sister, she's got her arms out, like she's not touching this guy at all, except his face just, <laughs> it was so funny. He sent a bottle of Asti Spumanti to the table after that. Really, and really, as a thank you. As a thank you, and she said thank you, but you won't be drinking it with me. <laughs> yeah, 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 and we won't be hanging out together later either. Oh, oh, my, my, it's one of my best memories. Well, uh, yeah, well, you know, when you're on stage, you see it all, and stuff that makes you laugh makes you cry. And stuff that makes, makes you, you go, mad. Don't be that girl. Don't, don't be that don't guy. Do that. So, you, <laughs> you know, after after doing these gigs for a few years, you you really realize the power of this. Uh, this liquid and uh, what it can do to people uh, among other substances and yeah. uh, you you really have a respect for it you you should have a respect for it unfortunately there were musicians that i played with who did not have a respect for it they got into it too yeah and uh, i didn't play with those guys very long guys like that wouldn't last long on stage anyway but well, um, you've had you've had gigs where the shots are lined up oh. in front of you oh and God. there's just there's no physical aid you can drink all those 
No way. No, <laughs> so no, no way. you didn't just get go back. <laughs> crazy times, crazy times. But I know my uh, my father in the uh, uh, post war uh, Germany in West Germany. Um, he was uh, sixteen at the end of the war. He turned sixteen, and um, um, by nineteen fifty, nineteen fifty, he was twenty twenty one. And so, starting in 1950, he was playing music professionally um, in dance halls. And uh, in those days, um, he had a he had a day job as an apprentice uh, bookkeeper, where he was getting crap money. Like like uh, uh, in today's world, um, you know, if you needed uh, twenty dollars an hour to get by, he was getting ten bucks an hour. And so he was still living at home uh, with his mother and uh, his siblings. But he was playing music on the side, and uh, the music on the side always allowed him to have money in his pocket, because his paycheck from his work went to his mom for overhead and and and, and rent and groceries and stuff, uh, just to help with the house. <clears throat> but the music money was his money, and uh, he would play uh, Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Now in Germany, you'd play Sunday nights and go to work Monday morning, believe it or not, um, traditionally. Uh, but he would he would play and, and of course as a musician you would get either uh, the drinks for free or at a, a reduced rate or audience members would buy you a drink for a for a song you'd play that they'd like to hear um, and then you'd get fed and this is the big thing for him is not only did you get money but Friday nights Saturday nights and Sunday nights he would get fed food and in West Germany 1950 51 52 uh, tough economic times and uh, there were still uh, provisions there were still rations on food and so to to uh, be able to uh, get an extra meal in you um, on a Friday night or Saturday night was a big deal to him being 21 22 I mean the guy's hungry all the time and um, so this was a huge a huge thing for him to uh, to be able to uh, to have this added luxury and that's, where um, met your mother. and that's how he met my mother yeah he was on stage and she was in the audience, and uh, that's uh, where one saw one and the other saw each other, uh, and that began a long road uh, down uh, down uh, down the lane of uh, romance and everything else. Um, and I remember uh, my mother told me a story about. Uh, uh, I asked her. I said, "Well, how did he propose to you? Like, what what did he say to you to, you know, convince you to marry this guy?" Um, and uh, she said to me, I don't remember the exact words, but she said um, the one thing he would always tell me, um, he would promise me uh, when we were going out and then when we were getting married, and even after we were married, he would say to her, uh, I can't promise you that I'll be the richest man in the world, but I, I can't promise you that. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work hard like all my brothers and sisters work hard, like all our friends, we all work hard. Um, you know. He'll, he'll always do that. He said, but I can, I can guarantee you one thing. He said, I might not have the most money, but you're going to have the most fun hanging out with me. Uh, laughs. There's going to be a lot of laughs in the household because he wanted to have a home where it was always fun times. He wanted to always have a jovial and a positive environment. And he said to her, um, I can guarantee you that, that uh, if you're, in, you're living with this guy, hanging out with this guy, you're going to laugh a lot more than you're ever going to cry. And... Um, and I said to her, well, uh, did he deliver? She's, oh, yeah, he's, he delivered in spades big time. And I can attest to that um, for sure. Uh, the, fun, the house is always a fun place. <clears throat> and uh, his mission in life was that, uh, that my mom was always happy, always happy, because uh, he knew the crap that they went through through the war, uh, through, the, through the Depression and then the war and post-war Europe and all of that. I mean, my God, the changes. So... That was my dad's shtick, and uh, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, good times. Um, yes, the old uh, getting drunk. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, there you are. Uh, what else is going on? Um, and um, uh, here we go. I don't know how to handle my margins. I had to sell 300 ATIP shares for small profit to bring down my $3,000 maintenance call. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be margining. Um, and uh, Let's see what else is going on here. Uh, hang on. Here we go. Um, <laughs> music. Play some Green Day. Punk rock in the morning gets me going. Uh, <laughs> or Pennywise. Um, 
<laughs> oh man. Oh no. <coughs> uh, we decided to rehearse when the levee breaks during polka practice today. <laughs> Oh, lordy, lordy. Um, uh, <laughs> Coyote, hey, Bruce, can you introduce me to your sister? Not related, uh, just, just curious. Uh, uh, he knew what he was doing as a John man. Um, so then what's your height, Bruce? Oh, I'm four foot eight, you know. Uh, you know, I'm always in Jen's chest, you know how it is. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, that's called motorboating, Uncle Bruce. That's called motorboating. Um, long on waltz, but short on height, weight, winning strategy. Um, <laughs> if you're foot four foot eight, your sister must be smaller, and and the dancing guy had to be under three feet. Uh, oh she's man, a tall woman. Uh, yeah, she's a tall woman. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, what can I say? What can I say? Uh, what else is going on here? Um, what I mostly remember, though, you'll have to tell me this because they can't really hear me, is how we would get up to some of those places where we drove through four foot walls of snow to get there. And the dance floor was crowded before you guys started. Yeah, we would, you know, we lived in a, you know, we lived in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, which combined the Twin Cities, we called them, would be about 200,000, 220,000 people. Uh, 70 miles west of Toronto, population one and a half million. Uh, but we would be hired by uh, by uh, Legion Halls, um, 60 miles north of us, in in what we call cottage country, uh, which is the far area of northern, not northern Ontario, but the northernmost area for very good growing uh, crop area. So farmers would come up, lots of farmers, country folk. These, we loved these gigs. These were the best gigs because um, we would drive, Jen and I would drive an hour and 20 minutes to get to this, to the small town, like Hanover, Ontario. Just loved Hanover. And uh, <coughs> we'd be in the Legion Hall and uh, there would be uh, uh, a stage for us and there might be 300 people in the hall. Uh, that They'd have tickets for 300 sold out. Uh, you couldn't get a ticket to this thing. Saturday night dance. We would play maybe once every couple of months. We would be brought up there, and uh, I get I would get paid eighty dollars for the gig, for the being the bass player in the band. Eighty bucks. The rent in my apartment was one seventy one a month. We're paying one hundred seventy three. One hundred seventy three dollars a month was our rent, and I'm getting eighty dollars tonight cash. That's how much this was worth to us. So you think about what your rent is today. Uh, if we're like a one-bedroom apartment, uh, eight hundred a month, nine hundred a month. How about getting four hundred fifty dollars to play for a four-hour gig tonight? Uh, that's you'd go and do that. So, and I'm a I'm a college student. I'm in college. Uh, so you know, all week long, I'm in school and thinking on uh, you know, knowing Saturday night I'm going to be playing this gig, getting eighty bucks. Oh my gosh, gas was sixty cents a gallon at that time 60 cents a gallon and uh, jen and i are driving the volkswagen up there and back and he's burning about three bucks in gas to do the whole thing um so uh so uh, we'd get up there and we set up our our instruments and uh and uh, we'd be ready about 10 minutes before you know the gig and uh <clears throat> the curtain would be drawn uh and and then we would peek out the curtain and uh, the the hall is packed it's it's full everyone's there uh, you can't find a parking spot anywhere near the area because all 300 folks have arrived and, and uh, uh, you know, the, everyone's there that's going to be there. And um, we opened the curtains at, uh, I think it would be, I think we started at 9, I can't remember the exact time, 9 till 1 in the morning or something like that, or 8 till 1. And a curtain would open, and the first song we would play is, is um, um, o, uh, o Canada, the national anthem. Uh, and the floor, uh, the floor of the dance hall is, is packed. Uh, there's, you can't see the floor. It, there's people on the floor. They're, they're all ready to start dancing. But we all know it's the Legion, you see, the Canadian Legion uh, for the veterans. You play the National Anthem. So we play the National Anthem. Everyone's standing at attention, you know, singing along. And then uh, we welcome, welcome everybody. And nice to have you out here. Well, let's get this dance started. And then we'd start with our first, uh, you know, polka or waltz or whatever. It is. And it's just a, it, the party's on. I mean, it was right now. Whereas other gigs we would play, You'd go to a Legion Hall, and and there would be uh, 
80 people in the entire place when we get started. And there'll be four couples dancing uh, to start the thing off. And after about a half an hour, we finally have 20 couples on the floor. And then in the second set, we'd have 150 people now showed up and there's like 80 on the floor finally. Uh, you know, but here in Hanover, it was a full blown sellout. The floor was packed right off the get go and time just flew because it was, it was just a, a wonderful atmosphere. Everybody just so happy to be here and uh, people seeing people and everything else. But you know, as the night went on, the alcohol took its effect. <laughs> Those are the days. I'll tell you, you had to be young to do it though, man. Oh man, I couldn't do it now. There's no way, no how. What's that? Oh gosh, yeah, that that's true. At the end of the night, uh, you know, they they come around. Some some people come along and say, "Hey, listen, you know, with like an hour to go, they say, uh, would you guys be willing to play another hour from like one until two in the morning? Would you go another hour?" And uh, we'd ask ourselves uh, if that's the deal. The, the the deal would be that we would get um, we would get maybe each guy would get an extra twenty bucks each for one more hour, or we would get. $30 each or $40 each. Well, there would be five of us. It would be another $200. So our leader, our fearless leader was our drummer who was a god awful drummer, but he could negotiate deals. And he'd come to us and say, guys, I, I've been offered $200 if we play another hour. That's 40 bucks each, which we'd split. We just split it five ways. And we'd, we'd go, yeah, okay, let's, okay, we'll go one more hour. And so I now get $120 for the gig. Uh, but usually at two, we'd all be just dead tired because uh, I was the youngest in the group at 22 or something, 22, 23 years old. Uh, the other members of the orchestra of the band were in their 40s and uh, 50s even. And so it, it, that would be it. We'd play one extra hour and that would be all she wrote. But I'd be driving home in that Vogue seat with uh, Jan and I. We'd be driving back. I got 120 bucks plus free drinks, which I would give her my drinks. She could have all my drinks. Um, and uh, free meals. And, uh, yeah, a good chunk of the rent paid again from one Saturday night. Those were the days. Those are the days. We're still negative on this market, down 125 on the Dow. Uh, they're down 238 on S&P. The uh, NASDAQ is up one and a half points. Uh, Matterport at 1402, down seven cents. SoFi at 1397, down a quarter. We're at 156.23, down 82 cents on GameStop. It's coming back. Those of you who bought your options back, it's coming back. Down 18 cents on ATIP. Um, down a penny on 23 and me. Uh, we're up 11 cents on Sextera here. We're down uh, 60 cents on Fifth Wall. We're down uh, on Spire. We're down 86 cents to 8904, unfortunately. Um, IBM down a buck 74. Um, the Dow down now 98. Uh, looks like it's coming back a bit. The Dow was as low as 34.690. It's now 34.8. 62 so it's 170 points better still down 92 at the moment it's not a bad sell-off it's not like a massive dramatic terrible sell-off but it's a down day and it's been a down day all morning the question we had a little pop into the positive for five minutes that was it uh so here we are uh let's see how this goes uh, microsoft up two bucks apple up 18 cents tesla down nine dollars Bed Bath & Beyond down 52 cents, BlackBerry down 35, Royal Caribbean down 305 to 7418 going lower. Amazon up $20, Facebook up $1.90, Alphabet, Google up a dollar. Um, and we got Costco up 630, Walmart up 60 cents, Cisco up $1.70, JP Morgan down 86 cents, Goldman down 374. Looks like it's bounced back up a bit. It was down to 392.40, 395.06 now, so uh, about a 250 gain uh, from the low of the day for Goldman now. That's where we're at. 88-point uh, drop on the Dow. We're up on S&P, and we're up on NASDAQ. Two of the markets have turned green. Uh, the question is, will it continue uh, to happen? MetLife raising U.S. minimum wage to $20 an hour at MetLife to attract people to come back to work. Interesting. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Laughter is the best way to a girl's heart. Bless you, Jen, says John. Um, yes. Um, let's see where we at here. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Um, 
I bought VAGC $20 calls a long way back for August. Uh, now I'm so very sad. Um, let's see. Thank you for sharing. That was a beautiful story. Um, and uh, let's go here. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, GameStop bouncing back a bit. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh. <laughs> AB says, we had a, a Norwegian foreign guest student in my high school. Um, at prom, she went with a guy who was five foot four, funny guy. She was six foot three. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh. Yeah, he couldn't keep rhythm, but he could negotiate. Yeah, he was the he was a master at getting good gigs. I had to admit, I mean, I was talking to other musicians about how much they would make on a Saturday night versus what I would make on a Saturday night. And I'm talking to guys who are making 20 bucks, 25 bucks on a Saturday night. I'm making 60, 80 bucks a night Saturday night. I'm, you know, these guys had to play four gigs to equal what I did in one. <clears throat> yeah, uh, in 1976, 77, that was good cash, really good money. And that paid bills. That took care of overheads. And Jen and I, we saved money. We, we had money in our savings account. And I was a full-time college student. Uh, uh, we, were, we were doing all right. Uh, but yeah, uh, most interesting. Uh, the old playing music for a living. And just on weekends. Um, but of course, the best was Oktoberfest. Uh, that was the best gig at all of all because you have 10 straight days of gigs. 10 solid days. I would take the week off of school and we're getting paid 200 a night cash. 200 a night per man in cash every night. Um, and so uh, two grand would be in our account uh, at the end of that. And our rent was 175 a month. So yeah, that was a good 10 day gig. I would be absolutely exhausted at the end of it. Uh, thank God I was 22 at the time. I could handle it to a degree. But even at age 22, man, did I need a break after it was over. But I didn't get a break because the last night was the Sunday night. Next morning was Monday. I'm in school. Uh, back to school. And uh, I can tell you, though, Monday night, did I sleep well? <laughs> did I sleep well that Monday night? Oh, my gosh. But uh, that was then. And uh, that was really good money. Really, really good money. Those are the good old days. Man, oh, man. Ah. Uh, Yes, 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 yes. Uh, thank you all for being here and hanging out. Uh, we've got uh, Robinhood down 444, SoFi at 1394 down 28 cents. We have the Dow down 110. We have S&P down three quarters of a point. NASDAQ up one and a half points. Oil down 238 to 6304. That is what's happening there. Um, yep. Uh, police investigating report of explosive in truck near Capitol. Areas evacuated. That's uh, uh, that's uh, kind of the new normal, unfortunately. Um, and uh, yeah, boy, I'll tell you, those were days back there. Uh, different life. Um, ATIP 381 down 18. AMC at down 181. Uh, Matterport down eight cents to 1401 now. Uh, 23 and me at eight dollars down one penny. Fifth wall down 66. Vector down 12. Spire down 90 cents to nine bucks. It was 10 bucks yesterday. 10 oh 10 10 yesterday. Nine dollars today, forty-four thousand volume. Just very inconsistent trading on the spire. I don't know what to make of it. Sextera up eight cents. Um, Vanek up a dollar twenty-five to two fifty-four. Home Depot up fifty-two cents to three twenty-two. Um, IBM down a buck ninety-six to one thirty-seven fifty-one. Breaking all the hearts, but that is a great buy long-term call contracts. That's a good one to get. Dow buck down a one thirty-three on the Dow. And Microsoft up a dollar ninety-one, and Apple up seven cents. So. A little bit of uh, good news, a little bit of not so good news, um, and uh, the markets have been mixed, and now we're negative again, and it's it's just uh, lots of stuff to be uh, wondering what's going on here. Been watching the capital story, hoping this whole city is not doing another January the sixth. It is crazy. Uh, these are wild times, um, and uh, it's amazing just uh, just how. Uh, ridiculous it is becoming unfortunately it is what it is but uh, I don't know it could be worse um, you could be living in Kabul 
um, you know, you could be a family just trying to get by in Kabul, and look who came into town this week. Um, not looking good. You know, uh, things are not uh, not happy. Um, there are other towns you could be in where it's not so great either. Uh, but boy, I'll tell you, uh, the world is the world today, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? The world is really something here, really something. I don't know, guys. I just don't know. Um, anyway, there you have it. Um, I think I'm going to shut this show down. I think I'm going to say thank you for being here today. Um, I don't want to bore you with nothing to tell you about. It's just a quiet one right now. Uh, I'll be back on at 3 o'clock today in front of the whiteboard. Uh, we'll watch and talk about some uh, We'll talk about some option scenarios over there. and You can ask me some option questions or whatever else you want to talk to me about. We'll see what's going on. Um, any any uh, info on SoFi? I've seen other channels reporting 30 per 6 ownership, big players. We talked about that this morning. Uh, I talked about that in my rant this morning about SoFi. Uh, went into that quite a bit. Uh, very high percentage of uh, institutional ownership on SoFi, and I, I think it's a good thing. I, I think this is uh, this is a stock that is a. Uh, it's going to take off. It's going to go. But I can't tell you the moment it'll happen. But when it does, it will be dramatic. But you know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it is. It is. Bruce, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, don't go. Uh, some of us need the white uh, noise in the background while working. <laughs> thank you, Uncle Bruce. Uh, we have got uh, 379 thumbs ups, and I thank you for the 379. If you're able to share a thumbs up with us, uh, that would really be nice of you. Uh, we would so appreciate it, uh, Jen and I. Um, and, uh, you know, there you have it. Um, and um, I'll just mention that uh, we now have lessons number one to number 10 now up on our website stockmarketswithbruce.ca uh, stockmarketswithbruce.ca that's the website you can now uh, enjoy any of the first 10 lessons any of you who are having problems uh, with your links not to worry just send me an email I will address it I've noticed there's some there waiting for me once I'm off the air here we'll take care of some links for you don't worry about it if you've paid for a lesson and you're having trouble getting the link not a problem. We'll take care of you. Thank you, everybody. Join me today at 3 o'clock for more coverage of the markets. And uh, we'll be in front of the whiteboard, and uh, we'll cover what's going on with you. And let's see if we turn this around. We're down 138 on the Dow, down half a point on S&P, up 9.8 on NASDAQ. Oil down 244 to 63.02 a barrel. So... Uh, oil's getting hammered. Um, that means interest rates are not going higher. Um, we're uh, not looking at inflation being a problem either. So uh, that's an interesting thing to watch there. Um, Uncle Bruce, can you make uh, video clips of SoFi specifically? Other channels are getting hell of reviews. I have uh, yesterday and the day before. I have been uploading recap videos with regard to my SoFi questions. They're there. Just check my check my channel out. Pick it up. You can check them out. No problem. 8, 10, 12-minute videos. Uh, have a good day, you all. Thank you, Spire. Yes, uh, Focus Energy on SoFi. So pumped on buying SoFi dip this week. We will keep you posted on the SoFi. I guarantee you. I promise you. We're back to $14 on SoFi, down $0.22. Cents. Right now, Matterport, fourteen oh one. The race is on uh, between the two now. fourteen oh four. dollars Matterport, $14 on SoFi. The race is on at $14. For both of those shares, uh, GameStop's only down 86 cents. Uh, looks like GameStop is coming on here. Those of you who bought your contracts back today, you might get ready to rewrite contracts later today. Keep an eye. See what happens. Uh, thank you for all your support and being here. Appreciate it. We'll catch you this afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern. And uh, hopefully we can make some more money then. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now.